call the uh, special meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified Board of Directors to order. Oh, right. All right. Uh, any additions or changes? Additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, yeah, I'd like to add the uh, school forest property. Okay. Uh, school forest property. We'll add that uh, Frank, uh, come, come right after the campus meeting. Okay. So 6.1 or whatever. Okay. Yep. Can you pass me on the And. <laughs> I usually also like to see public comment right after additions or changes just so that the public is here we can get them we can get them on the agenda let them say their say what they need to say discuss what they need to discuss and then let them go home I rather than having public comment at set yes now the integrated field review i think we all got it uh, electronically but there it is in paper form also pass this out two policies um the uh, Use of educational technology and pre kindergarten and kindergarten um, registration, or, or basically the dates when you can have your child start school. We're trying to get that unified throughout the whole SU. And also, there's some training opportunities for the board members. You might have seen this. I think probably as soon as your mail hit the ESBA, they, they will send you this stuff. So they please will. go if you can, and if you want, you can get Christy to sign you up by calling the SU. Um, so to clarify, this pre-kindergarten and uh, kindergarten policy is a current policy that you're just showing to us, or this is something we need to adopt? We need to adopt. act on it, uh, because right now, everybody's got a different okay. time and date on one day, and we just need to kind of unify that. So this is no. the first reading of... No, it can't, no, be. can't be. Because policies always have to be worn. So what we need to do is can we please make sure that, uh, that Christy puts the, you know, puts, a, puts them formally on the agenda for next month and we'll do our first reading. Yep. Uh, as far as the third page of this, the school board professional development piece, the, the, the uh, block in the middle, the uh, essential work of Vermont school boards, um, I would recommend uh, for for everyone that hasn't uh, served on a school board, if you can if you can make uh, April 16th in Rutland or April 10th in, in, in Montpelier seem to be the closest ones of uh, Windsor's. Uh, I think it's or there's the webinar on 423. That might be might be the simplest if you've got reasonable in, reason, reasonable internet at your house. Um, but that's it's it's really kind of, it's really pretty helpful. They 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 do a good job of kind of stepping through the different roles of the board, how the board should relate to the administration, how the board and the SU work together, kind of all all that sort of stuff. And they, 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 they do clarify a, a lot of things, and it is a, uh, a, a fairly worthwhile uh, presentation. The other thing I don't see on here, but if um, any of you are interested in, in participating in uh, um, uh, contract negotiations, they don't have a, a, a seminar listed for uh, a guy, there's a guy named Joe Blanchett that gives uh, talks on how negotiations work. You know, it's the, the, the general model, it's kind of like the court system. It's an adversarial uh, a, a bargaining system. It doesn't mean we hate our teachers. We want them to make a dollar. It doesn't mean our teachers want to, 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 to not have to work and, and to make hundreds of thousands of dollars just the idea is that, that, you know, while you're trying to work together to, to come come to consensus, you know, that the, the everyone, each side is holding their own agenda uh, as a primary one. And it's, 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 that's a very good, that's all. It, it, again, it's not listed here, but if you get, if you see the opportunity or the BSBA mail, e emails you about that and you're, you're at all interested in participating in, the, in negotiations in the future, I recommend uh, that you do that. As a matter of fact, there's some talk at the SU level of wanting to, to require anyone who's on the SU negotiating team to have to have gone through that uh, a seminar. All right. Um,
So let's start out with, uh, I'd like to jump around a bit. The, the first thing I wanted to know about is we had, we, we had asked for uh, some clarification on how we actually go about rescheduling the annual meeting. Uh, we um, will uh, post it, uh, basically um, sign the warrant, get it posted. We will uh, make sure that the, uh, the warrant is uh, vetted by our attorney. And, uh, uh, so there, but there, there's nothing that we have to do with the Department of State, the Secretary of State or anything because we're changing an no. annual meeting? No. So all, all we have to do is have the pro proper communication, you know, the, 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 the PR about it. I think we will send to them what we're doing. I mean, right. But they don't have to bust. Right. I didn't know if there was the, if there had to be some kind of paperwork we filed or, you know, I, I've, I've, I've generally been able, I mean, I've had to, you know, I've had budgets go down and have to schedule a second, you know, annual meeting to a special budget meeting, mm -hmm. but I've never, you know, I, I've never moved an annual meeting before. We've, uh, uh, Chelsea and Tunbridge set theirs the day before yours uh, last night. And then I think uh, Hancock and Rambles the week before, so we're going to be going right in a row. <coughs> okay. um, and they they had to move theirs as well because they they were trying for April, but there's no way that was planned. Yeah. Now can uh, I, I think um, I do think we need to uh, put something. Uh, you know, we need to, to send something to the paper, or put something in there that, that, that says what's going on. Um, why don't I mean? So that needs to be done by Tuesday. Why don't if, if you know? Why don't I write something up that's pretty generic, and I'll send it around. Everyone send their comments back to me, okay. and uh, you know I'll, I'll tweak the words. We'll send it out to the paper. I mean, it's, I, I don't want right. to. We don't need a chapter and verse. We need to say that you know, we need to. You yeah. know, it's it's our we're we're committed to giving you the most accurate uh uh figures we can and we didn't feel we could by the the day we set in february so we're moving into this date well Perfect. it's more important to have an accurate budget than it is to rush so. it is absolutely but i mean so basically that's the gist of it. i mean i'm talking I'm, I'm thinking it's something that's going to be you know a paragraph the, the the you know letter to the editor thing and see it perfect and then we can um i know in rochester liz, liz um oh, steventon has a, a, a huge list of email you know people that have signed up to get information we'll send send it through an email blast maybe but, post it I, mean, I was going to say front porch put, we'll do the same thing but that same on. paragraph of front page forum and all that just to, to make sure everyone's uh, yep. aware of what we're doing and that we're doing it thoughtfully sounds good yeah. um all right so now let's move into the budget discussion or do you want to do the budget discussion or the campus building plan first? This, this one the budget's going to be the big thing, so why don't we get right? So why don't we get the, the Rochester campus out of the way, and then the rest of the time will be the budget. Yeah. No, okay. we'll do it. This forest property is that a good property? Why don't we actually let's do that one first? <laughs> okay. Well, because the, the other three are all kind of more are more sort of intertwined. Okay. So um, as you guys are aware of and in our articles of agreement. Um, there was this bingo property. It's uh, listed as Bingo Road Forest Land Property in the um, list of property to be conveyed into the new district. Um, upon review from the lawyer, um, let me. This is David Rue. This is David Rue. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the forest property is actually a trust. It is okay. not actually owned by the school district. Okay. It is a trust that the principal and the high school students, not the elementary students, the high school students are trustees of. Okay. The purpose of this trust um, becomes frustrated or fails when it gets brought into the new, this new district. So we need to... What does that mean? So it's ended? Because no, it... it it, there, it's that's what was the legal word he said. It gets frustrated and it, it fails. The, the trust well, fails. We're all it frustrated. Frustrated. <laughs> it's not it's a good point. It gets worse. It gets not happy. It's because the, how the trust was set up is no longer being. Um, uh, oh, there's no high school. I think no it's the reality that there's no high school. Right. It's the reality that there's no high school is really what's <laughs> causing the trust not no longer to be Viable. to be right. Which the terms of the trust then fail. Um, so there's a couple different, so, you know, basically the Rochester School District doesn't actually own this property, right. which we thought we did when we 
put it into. Sure. Um, I do have copies of the old deed on that, you know, talks about it being a, a trust and, and how um, it, the, the trustees um, are, who the trustees are and how they're to deal with it. Um, so if the new district feels that this property is of great value to us and we do want to bring it into the new district, we're going to have to go to probate court and reform the trust. Okay. Does the who does it? Is there people that the trust? Uh, if the trust fails, it, are, are, are there people that that are you know descendants of whoever made that trust that are, are going to get it? Like was it the no? It um one of one of the in, in, get it. In, <laughs> it. Well, in it, it if it is, yeah. it's it's kind of um, I don't have you. I'll let you read this, but um, if they if the principal and the students vote that they do not wish to use, benefit, or control the said real estate, the officers of the, officers of the town school district, that's the school board, um, conveyed their interest in the land back to the town of Rochester. Okay, so if... if, if but whether it's, it's a little time sensitive because we weren't gonna have a high school in a couple months. Right. So if that is something that th this board is, I mean, I wanted to bring it to you guys, to this board first and talk to you guys about it. Um, we can, uh, if reforming the trust uh, seems to be just too much to do and we, just, we don't want to do that, we could release the, this would be the Rochester board and the principal and students would release <clears throat> the property back to the town. And if we felt, we, you know, we could possibly ask the town to put, uh, to convey an easement on it, on the property for educational purposes if we felt we wanted to right. kind of still have our hand foot over there, but not yeah. really go through like going to probate court to try to get it into this new right. district. So right. I just, I want you guys to have that information and I'd like to know what. Well, what is, I mean, do you guys, it, it, do, does, does Rochester have an opinion? I mean, I've I wanted seen, to I've bring it to you guys land. first because I felt it was more important and I just got this information and it just kind of worked out perfect that I got the information um, to be able to bring it to I mean, I've, I've, I, I don't even know where that is on Big O Road. Yeah, I went out, I actually went out there and took pictures of it uh, yesterday, and I do have a little map. Uh, this is the <coughs> a, a map of where it is. So there's a river, it's across, um, the, river. It's across the river, it's, there's some flat okay. area, and then it's a up big, slope, yeah. big upslope. There's lots of trees on it. Um, it's out Big O Road. Um, so it's nice, right? It's, well, no. it's not easily mostly... accessible. It's not an easily accessible piece. Mason yeah. lives up in Bingo, so he might be able to oh, yes, I give know a better that. description. Um, Mason's raising his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about this property, Mason? Well, I was hoping maybe, Amy, you had some history that you knew about how the high school students did participate with this piece of property. I do they not. I, I see it. There's this little sign that was that they wrote uh, That's where the bridge used to be where the bridge used to be but there's no bridge there anymore do you know the um, date on the deed i've got the deed right here um it's a little fuzzy at the bottom 1950 march 17 right. 1950. So, so back in those days when when the school and the, the students were they were active out there doing activities they built a log cabin out there and then we created computers and they started <laughs> yeah. participating with nature i guess um, but with yeah. students just a question uh with students who live in this town but they're now going to school in randolph they're still rochester students they are correct the community. And so there is a student body for the rest of this year. That is correct. This but they're, they're still. But I mean, that's that's that, that was the question I was going to ask. That's what he's getting at. Is I mean, I still have my son is a high school senior and a Stockbridge and a Stockbridge resident. So he's a Stockbridge high school senior. He goes to happens to go to Sharon Academy. Um, you know, or sorry, he's a high school junior. <coughs> that's wishful thinking. But um, isn't, he, isn't he considered, he's enrolled in Sharon, so isn't he in Right, that's, but I would be, I, I'm curious what the, 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 the you know, to what the exact, whether, whether like Dina or someone thinks that, you know, those, those kids would count. You know, as, uh, as, one, as, next year, you mean? Yes, because there's still, I mean, there's, there's, there's kids that are, that are Rochester High School students that are being tuitioned. I mean, the Rochester board is still in charge of those students. They are your students, just like the Stockbridge kids are mine. Um, um, so I mean, I think it's interesting to, 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 to get that opinion. I think that, I'm, I don't know the land, 
So I don't know, you know, if it's worth, I mean, you know, is it worth fighting for? I mean, is it worth well, you know, jumping through a hoop or two? Well, why I generally think that farts are, you know, I kind of agree with Mason that our kids spend a little too much time in front of screens, and I think having some trees to balance out the screens would be yeah. would and be kind of cool. Have you guys talked about doing experiential education yeah. Yeah. in the new form That's of whatever? Well, it's it's true. Using there, snowshoes out there the or whatever you. Yeah. Is probate a big deal? Oh. <coughs> I will say it's not at, at our now. meetings no, on the, the select yeah. board, it, this, this parcel comes there's up, the property. and there is very interest the in meeting. the town to have it put back to the town. So, I, so it goes around. I think That's it where it goes around. Right then talk with select board uh, is right here. Yeah. Just because I know it's part of the only part the last like. So the town wants Rochester town wants school to turn it over to the town. I mean, from what I've seen. um from the select board media, market media videos. There, there's a few people that have been in the crowd and have asked about this parcel and have interest in seeing it return to the town. So I well, think- So, I, and I don't know all the facts because I'm not a Rochester, okay. but I've heard that, that there is some kind of, that the Forest Service wants it. <laughs> it's the huh. and, it's, and, it's surrounded and they, by, it's all and they they want, Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, it's the students attending set high school. Yeah. Privately owned so that, that, would, that would be that. Don't have. And yeah. that there's some kind of uh, other trade they want to do for some land around the sewer system. Uh, oh, that, 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 that is the, 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 the I'm not the sure that's the parcel we're talking about. The Forest Service might own that parcel as well. And, there, and so it would be a swap? That I've not heard of. I just know that in watching the select board media, or media videos, that this parcel has come up by Nancy Woolley, um, Harlan. There's been. Uh, a few residents that have been bringing up the select for me asking about what's going to happen to this parcel. Seems to me right. it's worth keeping. My understanding was that at one point the kids voted to keep it rather than give it up. There was one vote in the high that school. When that was going on. Okay. voted not to give it yeah. up. And, as, and, far, and, and as far as the tuition student goes, when I look at the language and it says, said property shall be under the sole and exclusive control of the, pro God, I hate having to read over my class, I'm old man. <laughs> Uh, it's under the sole and exclusive control of the principal of the Rochester High School and the and the students attending said high school. Right. So that's that it, it, right. that to so me that limits limits going to be right. right that that you know, the tuition kids the tuition kids couldn't do that. I mean, so I think that goes to your point, Amy. I think it, this gets whatever the board wants to do it gets much more complicated when Rochester High School ceases to exist. Right. Well, the other thing is, I was do you just want to give it up or not? Yet. Just, just yeah. one thing I would add, and I'm late to the party, I know that I'm sort of the new kid on the block, but many schools are struggling to find outdoor areas and to provide outdoor experiences. So I would just caution um, that you don't move quickly and right. give it up when in a couple of years we might be saying, why right. did we ever yeah. do that? Right. Is there some regulations though about like, because where the bus would have to stop is, is the road. I mean, it's a dirt road and, and there's not a lot of traffic on it, but there is no parking there. Um, there's no a, a, there's no area to create any parking. Um, so you're saying it might not be feasible to use it, actually? It, it would probably be something I, like we, the, sure. the bus would have to drop the kids off, or the bus would have to go down out of the right. road and get and out of the go way. Find someplace else and we'd park. have to make sure there was a walkie-talkie or something, so if there was an emergency, the bus could be called back. So, I mean, it, it'd be logistically <laughs> But, it, but it's it, we we don't know that we can't do something in no. the future. Years, number no, one, number two, if the forestry wants it and the town wants it, why don't we keep it? Because maybe we <laughs> <laughs> maybe do something we don't know. Yeah, I mean, why don't we keep, maybe we decide that we don't want it and we'll sell it to them? Well, but why I mean, give it up? Do we know? That's another thing I don't know. Is I mean, we've got the National Forest right there. Right, with, that's what all of that surrounds it, that you don't right. see any lines. Right, right, but you've got a barn. I mean, so there's 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 that, that barn space that I think has, it's got like a meeting room, classroom space in that ranger barn, the, the forestry. Uh, there's no meeting space. I don't think space. there's no, no space. No, there's no, there's no, there's no. I don't think we should give up 20 acres. I think that would be exactly. too much. It's no, the build, no, the barn where they have their, where they have like the, the yeah. where you go and you get yeah, your maps and you want to get a Christmas tree out of the forest. Yeah, yeah, in the the old farmhouse looking ranger station. Yeah, the barn outside is all vehicles. Oh yeah, no, no, I meant the. I'm sorry. I, 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 yeah, there's definitely a meeting area. Right. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess my qu my my <laughs> question is. Oh, I always smile. Does the I mean. <laughs> Does the town? I, I mean, I, I'm assuming that the kids go to the forest there. Or, no, or, they or, haven't. Um, it, 
the Forest Service, there's not there's not a good relationship between the school and the oh, Forest Service. Yeah, good relationship, yeah, exactly. good relationship but well, I don't think yeah. I just don't think they access. I don't it. think we've ever accessed it. I right. graduated from here twenty something years ago. We never used Maybe. it. Didn't even know we had it. <laughs> what? Maybe I will say a benefit to both of our towns. <laughs> a benefit to both of our towns in Stockbridge and Rochester is we are in a unique situation of being surrounded by national forests, which is the land of many uses, which means you have the right to go hiking and on um, established sure. trails. And, and um, so uh, I'm not sure if it's worth a fight, <laughs> but I don't know how much of a fight there really is. But I do know that yeah. people have asked about it. Um, and yeah. I'm curious about what's going to happen with that parcel. Yeah, and the, the, the lawyer that you guys have used, just hire a lawyer? Is this a guy in town? No, this it's part of Dina's firm. OK. Norman, uh, David Rue. David Rue. He's the one who did all property it, transfers. He's the one that districts. did the title searches. Can we okay. find out what the probate would mean? I mean, I don't yeah. Can we get more of an idea of, of what Do that would? Do you want um, him? I can contact him. Would you also like um, me to set up that we call him uh, at our next meeting on the third? Because he said he'd be happy for that. Might be to that, that, that might be that might be a, a useful thing to okay. do. I will set that up you know? uh, for him to to ask him what it would take to. Is this the only copy of this you have? It is. If you are uh, to ask him if we were to keep it on the list. Thank you. Uh, but I do have a copy of the deed. If yeah, Frank just gave me a copy of the deed. Okay. And but okay. yeah, I just well, want to you know just just what the what what would probate entail. Okay. And you know what you know the, the so the, the the town wants to take or the the, far, the town wants to swap that for some other land. Is that what I? Understand? I'd like to confirm that I, with. I don't know whether that's true, but that's the. That's it would make sense too. because I know that the forest service, I know that the parcel um, on the south side of town is forest service, and it is um, we, the town uses part of it. So maybe okay, so some kind of interest. I know that, should, that is. You should check that out. Like right, that. because I mean, again, though, if that if it's for that sort of reason, I think you know, would the forest service care if we got an easement to use it? You know, I because again, I don't I, I don't want it to develop it. I don't want it to. Yeah. You know, right. to, 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 to log it. I don't want to tap it. I just want, you know, I want the kids to go play in the brook. So let's, let's talk about maybe see what an easement, if I put it the lawyer we could ask. Yes. Oh, so yeah. also we could ask about if we did convey it back to the town, how we could put, well, and that's what he said, we could put legal verbiage into it that would convey an easement that we could use it for educational purposes. Right, and that, I mean, I think but, that would make it, I mean, yeah. if, if. I mean, because you know. what can we do there that, if we owned it, that we couldn't just do anywhere in National Forest. Right. That's that's what I. That's what I. Would anywhere do. along that road, road in Bingo Brook, we can you go walk in the brook. Down. Right. Right. But I mean, I do just parking or, or I'm sorry, Frank, or camping or I don't know if we wanted. I don't know if, if, if there'd be a difference in what we could do camping wise or whatever. Well, and up there is camp, I mean, in Bingo, there's is primitive camping at the end of Bingo Brook Road. Um, so there's no facilities like bathrooms. You right. can go to and Brook and camp, and there's you know, bathrooms and some wash. Frank? Um, correct me though if I'm wrong, but this is the responsibility of the old board, not of this board. That's correct, but it it, it means it, this is the new board that it, yeah. it was told it was going to, so I feel that it's this board's. But in terms of taking action, correct. it's the old board's the old responsibility. Board. That is yep. correct, Frank. Okay. I agree with that, but I 100%. feel that it's very important that this board talk to it's, it's our choice here now. Yeah. I would like to know what the permit is before we get up 20, 15 acres. I mean, that's yep. a sizable chunk. And I'll, I'll set up so that um, we can do a call in with him on um, next meeting. And that's going to be in Stockbridge. And we, right. My cell phone doesn't work, but. Yeah, we have a phone. You now. guys have a way of. Okay. Great. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, the building plan. Can we get a hold of. Uh... We've had what? Let me hand out something wrong to China. We've had one conversation with Kloof. We have a conference call set tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Um, we'll certainly know more after that conference call. This is for the audience. Let me just give... A no, that's the audience, Jenny. Oh, I bet you guys are different. Here's your two sides. Let me start these around. Would you give one to me? Uh -huh, you got me. Oh, Katie, I did it again. <laughs> is this the same thing? It, no. There's two pages. Oh, that's okay. Did you give, did you I didn't get one, yeah. Thank you. Just let me walk. Okay. Yes, it is. Who's doing that one? I have one. Okay. They're coming around. Oh. Um, so 
what you have here it was just it's just my attempt to show you what the current status is, what the what the situation is that uh, that we're looking at and working with. If you consider the first page, it says elementary building. If you just consider that page one, and then high school building, page two. Uh, I'm going to start on page one. Frank, yours is double sided. One's on the front, one's on the back. Um, I'm going to start uh, up in the upper left hand corner of the elementary building. That is the, con the classroom configuration that the faculty and I have identified works best next year given the number of students we will have here at Rochester and the, uh, the, the teaching position. So we will have six different classrooms. If you then look at the elementary school map, you'll see with no particular designation for grade or teacher, you'll see where I've identified classrooms one through six. Six being down here on the, on the yep. far right. The library <clears throat> is up in the upper left hand corner. And then the other uh, functions I've left as they're being used now. For example, you can see the office right across from the gym. You can see the staff room. You can see the, the Title I uh, tutoring space, the nurse's office. So those spaces at this point are maintained as is. If you go to the high school building, that would be your page two. What I'm attempting to show on page two would be the functions, the programs, the functions, that need to be transferred from the high school building to the elementary building if we were to house the, the ed program solely in the elementary building. So you see on that page there's art, there's music, there is One Planet, that's our after school and school vacation um, uh, program. There's maintenance, there's guidance, and then there's the uh, tech support, which is a little uh, rectangle up there above the commons. I did not identify the classrooms used by our fifth through eighth graders because they will be in, in um, fifth graders will be back with the elementary, wherever that is, and then six through eight, they'll be in, in choice middle school somewhere. So I haven't five identified. Six. Five and six. Five and six, I'm sorry. So I haven't Seven identified uh, classrooms here. So then if you go back to page one, here's what I've what I would like you to look at. At the bottom right hand corner, you'll see all of the programs and functions that are in the high school. So art, music, tech support, maintenance, administration, one planet, and guidance, small group. Small group guidance, what I mean by that is, um, Dia has a space here now in her office here where she has a small office in the back that she meets with parents individually, plenty large enough to do that. Then she has this front space where she can meet with small groups, three or four groups of youngsters for working out some difficulties or making a plan or something like that. So those are the functions that are in the high school. If you look back at the elementary building again, the ones I've starred, the functions that I have starred, art, music, tech support, one planet, and some small group guidance space are activities that I cannot find space for in the elementary building. So for example, there is not a, a good space in the elementary building for the art program. If the art program were to, co were to come to the elementary building, if the board's decision is to have the entire uh, pre-K to six program in the elementary building, um, art would probably have to be more like the art in a cart model that a number of schools historically used to have. What does Stockbridge have? Uh, we do not have an art room. I didn't think so. We do not have a teacher's lounge, we do not have a conference room, we do not have a staff lounge, we do not have lockers. Our music and art is in the gym. Right. That's right. We do not have the title, whatever that is. Title one, All the best services, they're in a closet in Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's that room on the far left that's um, 123? That whole area, what is that? Are you in high school or elementary? Elementary, it's elementary a small school. conference room. It's the small, it's the place, the place we have to meet with parents. And, and, uh, Where do we meet with our parents? In the classroom. In the clo classroom? Yeah, the <laughs> mm. In the closet, it used to be a closet, yeah. So what does One Planet have in their 
office for the high school. So they have all their records. They have uh, storage for some of their Starbridge programs. Starbridge doesn't have anything for that as well. Yeah. Where do you guys keep the sensitive records? You just have a locked file cabinet or something? Yeah. Yeah. All your, Probably all your health records and your medical releases and all that. Probably there's some, there's some locked in closets the, in that closet, that the, in the closet, closet right? in front across from the Casey's oh, office or whatever. Yeah. I think there's a, a file cabinet in there. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably I think there's three of them that are in different places. They might also be some of the files might be upstairs in that that space above the the cafe gymatorium. And we have um, we're trying to stop for just uh, 50 students, and we have 90. 90. Um, <laughs> and Can I, what is? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, I, I got interrupted. Um, so all I'm trying to show is visually the programs that presently exist mm -hmm. and the fit it would be if we move to the elementary building. And then you could look at it conversely and go the other way. If you took the high school map and you went around and counted out six classrooms, um, those are the six classrooms we need for the configuration, that's what it would look like if the program were to move to the high school building, we would maintain the art room, we would maintain the music room, um, the auditorium, One Planet would continue to have uh, space for its after school and vacation programming. So, okay. So the use in the high school is pretty sporadic. It seems like you would need fully functioning high school building. And the high school is the one that's got the charged um, sprinkler system. The high school has got the charged sprinkler system, which is on our list for tomorrow when we speak right. with the proof about And the elementary school, I mean, what, so we, you know, because the original thought that, 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 that had been discussed was, oh, we can get everything into the elementary building and really, you know, uh, shutter the, the <laughs> shutter more square footage in the high school building. What do we know about the, 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 the negatives of shuttering the elementary building? We're just about a day too early for me to answer that question, Carl. I'll have a better answer to that question when we speak with Pooh. And what about Come modifying on. the elementary school to place some of these things in there? Well, what, the, original, the original plan that came, we were going we were going to cut the library in half right. and maybe make some of that a... Yeah. The well, library's a nice, nice, nice place, but it's... You know, it's big, and, and uh, that's a possibility you could you could do that. Right, and in, in, in either of so in this, both of these models, where's where's the pre-K room? Uh, it would be one of the six classrooms, Carl. I did this. Ah, I see. I, I see the six. Right. I was looking at classroom six and thinking first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. No, no, no. no. I, I realized I intentionally yeah. didn't do that because yeah. teachers are wondering where they're going to be. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I see and them. I see that we do say pre-K. So this this. This area down here, uh, Jenny's asked about the far left. Um, if you start at room 115, that's a special ed room. We have a number of youngsters, uh, I'm guessing Stockbridge does too, who have, do, um, have OT, PT needs. And that in that room is where the occupational therapist and the physical therapist work with kiddos. Uh, the next office is a um, early ed uh, special education office. Um, and then there's Dia's small guidance office. That would be part of the space she has over here. So there would be a place for a guidance office there, but they're tiny. They're like two person, two person cubicles. And then we have special ed space. And then we have. Um, so it looks like four special ed spaces. Yeah, one of those special ed spaces uh, would have to be the principal's office or the tech support folks. Okay. 120 has functioned as a principal's office in the past. Someone told me that yesterday, yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Frank, that the principal's office, and it's, it would be fine for principal's office. Except it's just way far away from the action. I guess the issue is the equity, too. Do you exactly. know? I mean, 127 is, is bigger than our, our office. Our goes, office. Wait a minute. That's the building it's you not have. Even you know, they have this, so why? But at the same time, I see Stockbridge residents go, wait a minute, we do art in the room and we do music in the room and, you know, we don't, we don't need those, not that we don't need, not that we wouldn't love we would to, have, to have, but them. we don't. So therefore, it, it leads to inequity and I'm sure our community would not 
um, abide that. I can guarantee that. So my concern would be, I think if we and I know parents from um, tuition towns are already looking to what Rochester is going to be doing, but I do think that it might lead to... Well, they're not voting. They're not voting, but there are revenue for our people. I know, but we need to get it through to the vote. No, 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 I know. I'm so just then we would move in Stockbridge. Yeah. Um, I think I think the issue you, you you will have, and I'm just trying to be objective. I think the issue you will have, and I understand that the Stockbridge building looks more like our elementary building than our high school building. I, I, I certainly understand that. I'm not sure that you will get support for your budget in Rochester if you back these programs. I mean, Rochester is very wedded to the music and theater program. You can still have the program, it just won't have its own room. Not if we don't have to be over here, Jane. We probably close the. We probably close that section off because we wouldn't. There's only we wouldn't be over one here. classroom that abuts it. And I would say the same thing for music. But I don't you do what Bruce said and do part in the library. That was my, you know, when we were trying to figure it out. It's I, not, I mean, it, perhaps what we should have done maybe is taken a walk. It really isn't, it really isn't that large. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, no, that's true. it's a small, it's a medium sized classroom. It's not a large classroom. Um, it's not the size of the room. And I don't know what room, Jenny, we were in that night. We had the meeting down there, what classroom, but it's not the size of the classroom. But you would basically, the, that we were in down there, change the purpose of those rooms. I mean, right now they're filled with books and computers and things like that. <clears throat> it would it would be common. I have a quick so is question. the elementary school using that this year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had a quick question. Sure. Has, have you evaluated the heating system in this building? So that's tomorrow. what we're doing. That's what we're starting on tomorrow. So we have a pretty outdated oil system, but the tank is in the floodplain of the White River. That's what three hundred thousand gallons. Are you asking questions you know well, the answer to? Yeah, I don't sort of. I'm trying to remember, <laughs> but it seems to me that all there's some interesting expenses there to, that are coming up. I mean, regardless of what happens, we're going to have to heat this building to some degree. We can't just let it fall into. Well, that's been the in, the I informal think. input has been we're not going to save anything by not being in this building because so, and, and I don't know if this person these people are accurate, but they're saying to set the heat much below 66 in a building that has a charged system is basically asking for difficulties. Why keep it then? Why, why can't, have you thought of giving it back to the town? I think the option that the board has to consider is if there is any kind of increase in population, we're going to be shoehorned in here. There's there's just no way that the element, there's, moving to the ele elementary building um, leaves no option for any sort of growth either in program or student population. We will basically be, be you know, in the six classrooms. Those will be the options. Um, that's where the programs will have to take place. I also think that one of the things that folks spoke about um, the quality of the of the music program that that we have, and that we're hoping to connect with um, Stockbridge for. I think it's unlikely that you you would you keep an excellent music teacher if they're really in a situation where they're moving from room to room or their music on a card or um, because the number of instruments that she's been able to build up since she's been here um, right. there's no place to put them in this building they won't be able to travel with her the Stockbridge keyboards instruments the, school, the kids carry them back and forth with them yeah. so I guess the issue is you know do we want the two schools to be identical is that the goal that we want to take one school's programs and move yeah. them back until everybody's at the same point, or do we want to try and raise all the boats? I mean, there's two ways to look at this. You can either lower all the boats, right. or we can we eventually, are. over time, try to raise all the boats. Right, well, we're right, and we boat. need to, so I, I think what we need to hear is, is you know, again, I don't think, I, 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 I don't think the reaction is, is a, you know, is, is a knee jerk, you know, if it's not in mine, it's not in yours. But understanding how, you know, the 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 uh, uh, programming can be uh, can be made comparable in Stockbridge, because the answer that the that you know 
the, the, the feeling that's the, the, the feeling that, that, that's going to come across is that is is the idea of well, you know, we just we have a room. You don't have a room, you know, and figuring out how that can can be made to work, you know, short of saying well, fine, you know, we'll I mean we'll bust the kid. I mean, what all the I mean, do all the Stockbridge kids come here for Art and Music Day? And how would that look? Or some sort of, yeah. there needs to be something that's, that, that's put forward that says, right. if we're going to continue these, you know, we're going to say we can't, you know, this, this, this robust music program in, in Rochester is, is going to be continued, but oops, you didn't have it in Stockbridge, that message won't, won't, won't fly at all. Well, but if the there's over for an hour, isn't going to Yeah, no, I, I understand that. That's, but that's what I mean. I think it right. needs to be looked at more than just you know, I, I think what we're getting into here as we're looking at this conversation is we're going from what was supposed to be, you know, a kind of just a space planning conversation to saying, well, space planning ties to programming. Programming, you know, there's, 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 there's an equity. And certainly, I think it's understandable that there's more FTEs of, you know, of, 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 of art staff when there's more kids in Rochester to be taught art to. I don't think... You know, I, I don't think that there's a feeling in, in, in Stockbridge that because our art teacher only needs to be around for a day, that you need to educate all your kids in a day and have shorter art or bigger classes. You know, I think that there's there's an understanding that there's that there's more more students, and I think there there'd be an understanding about space. But I think where it is where you do get into into a pain point for the for the Stockbridge uh, 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 families is, you know, the idea that there is, you know. Because they have the advantage of being able to tag team onto the high school space, that there is a dedicated art space, that there is, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a dedicated music space, and how can, you know, how can that, how, how can that be, be, be worked around so that the the answer is not, well, we have to cut the cut these programs back so that your kids are all, you know. In, in, in an area, because I think in Stockers we'd love to have a music room. We just can't afford it. We don't have the, you know, we we, we, we don't have the, the, space. The, the space to support that. Um, well, my question also is, what is, you know, what's, but, what does Stockbridge residents really value for a program? What and that kind of goes back to the survey. What do they really want there? They want music a lot of STEM. might not be huge on their list of what they really want to get into the school. STEM might be. Maybe we can look at increasing the STEM in Stockbridge, because that's what Stockbridge really values. Sure. Whereas Rochester really values, you know, possibly really values this music. Program. Right, and this is this is this is this is where I think we're kind of up against it. With, right. You know, we would we would have been in a lot better shape if we, we we'd had the principles we started with, that and there was there was there 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 had been some of this 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 dialogue ongoing, right. as opposed to people just trying to keep the ship afloat. I would really like to know the, the outcome of the phone call tomorrow because I think we really have to think about this. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, not, it, it's not fair to punish you guys because you have the building. <laughs> we already have it. Well, um, and yet well, I want it to be are. equal for us. Yeah, don't forget about uh, the number of kids, the, uh, the number of tuition kids. That benefits both of you. You yeah. have to start looking at this as... Yeah. As and that's what they do is for it? all of you, not just one town or the sure. other. For all of you, that's the sure. same conversation we just had about the land. Right. I mean, it's not going to be just Rochester kids out there. It's going to be Stockbridge kids too. And, and if we sure. lose Hancock and Granville because Middlebury offers a better, that's why I think we really need to know the finances. I mean, yeah. right. Well, I think, what it but is. I think we also need to be thinking again, thinking about it in more just well. We have a music room. Let's use a music room here and more in, okay, we know there's going to be this difficult conversation, how do we prepare for that and how do we do that, what kind of programmatic adjustments can we make? For example, one of the things, I mean, I think it's a bad idea, but, you know, the, the, there's a kitchen in Stockbridge, um, you know, uh, could that be turned into a music room in Stockbridge? Could the kitchen here in Rochester be turned into a music room in, 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 in Rochester and the food bust up? You know, do we need to have two full kitchens? Right. Both in, 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 those are both in the elementary buildings. Could we, so I think it gets to be a bigger conversation. Um, but, you know, I, I think it needs to, we need to, 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 to get some, some thought around that, around ways that... Or maybe the scheduling is, and we were talking about bringing kids here for music, for an hour and then busting them back. Maybe you have a schedule that brings them here for uh, tech ed and, and music together 
you know, one after another, and then you bust them back or something like that. And, sure, and then and, you know, and you try to be efficient with that time so that they're not. Sure. Well, the, I mean, and I think one of the things that we've talked about in the meetings earlier was, you know, it's 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 more problematic in winter to get you know 17 pre-k and kindergartner kids into their gloves into their boots into their mittens <laughs> onto the bus sitting down on the bus buckling their seatbelts on the bus no really buckle your yeah. seatbelts jimmy take your finger out of bobby's ear <laughs> going through that whole you, you know just the, the spent, you just spent a half hour right there exactly exactly, one half hour. exactly. One direction, so that's where in one direction and, and, and so that's where this you know uh, the, the the busing piece becomes problematic. But I think we need to we, we, we need to think about how we can you know how we can 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 manage that uh, better or, or, or differently or you I know just to just to understand what we're but, doing. Yeah. I think one of the issues that the board you know will have to grapple with is and I can only guess this because I wasn't here at the time of the discussions, but I could almost guarantee that not a lot of people were thinking how we would have to downscale this many programs to make this program fit in the elementary building. I mean, to be honest, I don't know where band would happen in this building. Or is this I, in the cafeteria? I don't know. You know, I don't the know. Gym. In the gym. And, and you can say, uh, well, when I was in school, uh, 25 years ago, we all fit in that building and we were all just really happy. Well, you didn't have special ed like it is, and you didn't have speech therapy like it is, and you didn't have... In Stockbridge, they do it in the hallway in the gym. Well, I, I can guarantee you that. You use what you have. You use what you have. You use what you have. Every, you use what you have. Every, so why can't you use what you have in the elementary? We do. We have, this, we have both. We have both. And I guess the yeah. argument I'm trying... I guess the argument I'm trying it's to make... It's one-sided is what I'm saying. And, and right. You did not show what an elementary would look like if you adjusted. That's what I did here, Jenny. No, That's what just I did this. In take out the locker rooms. Take out the conference room. See what you can really fit in there. Well, what I tried to do was show the essential functions. I know what you're trying to do. You're that are, that are. Leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's going to cost us money to retrofit these buildings. I mean, to take out the lockers and to maybe take the, the library. And it's a cost compared to keeping two schools open. I'm sorry I'm the only one here that thinks this, but this is not fair. No, I, I understand what your point is. We have to figure out how to make it fair. That's the thing that we need to work on and we need to get an understanding of. Um, and is there a way we can use our can we take some of the stuff out of, you know, your school that's crammed in the closet and so you would have more open space in your school? Like I'm not sure what your building may have is. Yeah, I think, you know, I think there are, the multi-purpose room or the cafeteria has all sorts of stuff um, right. there, I, but it still wouldn't give us, I mean, that's what they need every day, you know, no, it's not as those, it. yeah, they use it every day, so. It's there's not there's really day. not anything cool. extraneous in that building because there's no space for it to be in that building. Um, You know, it's it's very problematic. I, I and I'm sorry, Jane. I, I didn't mean to be at all disrespectful. What I what I've tried to leave here is what what is um, what is required. The required functions that that we're now using. For example, there's been a number Are of lockers schools. required. I don't have any lockers in here. You have lockers in the room. elementary, right here. Well, the, Megan it's, said those are lockers. It's the, the locker room. It's the, the locker room, room, but there's no it's air, there's, the no, there's no windows, there's old showers. Yeah, but couldn't that be used right. for something different? Right, could that be used for offices? Could that be... Well, well, but listen, you just put X's through them. Well, no, no, well, one, of, one, of them, use it. one of them, this X down here, that's a heating room. There's a boiler in there and pipes and same over here. That locker room above it, um, there's very poor lighting. You'd have to spend a fortune on lighting if you're going to make that an office. There's no fresh air. There's no windows. It's a dark, dank hole. I wouldn't want to work in it. I would guess most of you wouldn't want to work in it if we went over there. So there's I didn't. There's teachers in Stockbridge working in I closets. Didn't. Well, this is worth. We've we've got some closets over here, Jenny. One of these special ed rooms is actually a closet. I'm just saying that that locker room 
Um, I think you would have workplace issues if we assigned anybody to that space as the well, It doesn't have to be a you know, maintenance or space. something like that. Yeah, maintenance right. could be in those rooms. Okay. Maybe a suggestion would be, first of all, let's get the information you walk over from, to, okay. from tomorrow's okay. phone call to see exactly what we're dealing with. Right. The second thing is, at least for me, I'm very much a visual learner. I would like to walk. Yes, I would like to walk around the elementary school. I would like to see, you know, what could be done, or walk around here, especially once we know what the possibilities. Yes, then let's let's all try to get together and walk around and see what we can do and see what we can make. Please keep thinking that these buildings will be Stockbridge's buildings, just like they're Rochester buildings. It yes, I, it, but you know, it I know it does, yeah. but but it's true, you know. Right, got, but, but the, the voters, the, the voters in Stockbridge and the families in Stockbridge, didn't 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 vote necessarily to to, to join the unified district to bus all their kids up here. That's Nobody's right. Nobody's asking them to bus. No, but I mean, but the, when you say these are your buildings, use them. Just drive your well, kids up if, here. If I there's think, a play, I mean, they could come well, here. Play, for sure, plays it, and we understand that. We talked a lot about the the special programming that was going to happen between the two things and the way we're going to build collaboration uh, uh, working forwards. I just think it's a matter of we need to, we need to, you know, and, and, and I understand that we're leading with figuring out the building spaces on this side because we have to figure out what we're closing and, and what we need to, 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 to re-engineer um, to, to, to make that work. But again, I think that, you know, bringing in, um, you know, bringing in, uh, uh, you know, uh, establish, say, okay, well, we're going to put, you know, we're, we're going to have dedicated music rooms and dedicated art rooms um, when the gym, the auditorium, the cafeteria, the art room, and the music room are, are, are one space that, at, at the building. You know, yes, I understand that there's, there's more kids here, but there needs to be, I think there needs to be more creative thinking about about how, if we're going to, to going to keep those, you know, use those resources, do we can we get a can we get a you know what like what they have for the for the the preschool program you know a trailer or a modular unit in the in the Stockbridge to be a, a music and, and, and art space where it's a small you know there's a, there's a modular classroom that can be dedicated and if it's you know usually those things are big enough that they probably have all the art stuff on one side all the music stuff on the other side so it's not music in a cart or art in the cart. It's a space where the kids can, can rotate out to. I mean, can Something we, like that. But I mean, we need to. Those are the things that we need to get. We need to get you know uh, in, ideas in, on it quickly. And that sort of the thinking of having all the bolts rise versus all yes. the bolts. Yeah. Well, that's right. And, when, lower. and 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 I don't think anyone wants all the votes to lower. But I also don't don't think that anyone wants <coughs> the votes to be you know the the yeah. the, 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 the votes to be left at, 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 at different places because there's there's you know. Yes, there's space here, but there needs to be to be thought given can we, that. Can we look? Can we have a pr the principal, the interim principal, or whoever needs to do it? <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, look in. I mean, what's that? No, no, like no come on. I mean, I would be interested. Jeez. You know, and I'm going Joanne? to say. I was just thinking too. The gym um, is a, a pretty big space too. They could divide that in half, two half sides, and gym can be on one half side and use the other half um, for gym cafeteria. The other half for classrooms or what some of these things on the bottom right, right. inside because of the page. I mean, our multi-purpose room is the size of this room, actually smaller than this room. Small. Yeah, way smaller than this. And we have all of these things plus more in that room. But right. that gym over there could be divided in half. I'd like to look into the modules then. I'd like to see what that, I think that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Put temporary but walls that, that was the next point I was going to make was about the gym, which yeah. is also that, you know, Yes, that's a full-size gym. It's a it's a regulation basketball court, but there's not going to be a, a, a basketball team playing. Right, there, exactly. You know? And they go yeah. this way. Yeah. And someone told me, Joanne, and I don't know if this is true or false. It's just part of you know the historical lore. Someone said that when when uh, Rochester was still K-12 and the population was higher than it is now, they did they did some looking into trying to divide that gym because they felt they might have to do that given the population because it is a full-size gym with a high ceiling. Somebody said the costs were close to $65,000 to put a wall in there. Yeah, but you could put them. like half walls or whatever in there, you know, like the open classroom uh, dividers. Up right, and there's sound that thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I, I think that's, that's so pretty. That's, I don't, that's, that's a pretty, that's, Frank's I'm sorry. And I, and I think a walkthrough would be very, very good. 
and just look at those spaces that, that have the edges in them. I, I, I think I know, like, um, those spaces that this on the elementary with the kitchen. I think I know what those spaces have in them because um, it's all it's all storage and filled with um, food and and whatever. But but for example, I don't um, I don't know what for example 129 130 to the um, left you know to the left hand of the gym are and that. But I think 120, we need to 129 yeah. is a furnace room break. There's a boiler oh, in there and pipes. Right. Okay. 130 is, is the locker room, but 129 is the yeah. boiler room. Yeah. But I think a walkthrough would, would be useful. I think that would be very beneficial. Um, we're looking at this from a cost perspective or an, a feeling of inequity. I guess a. Both. 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 Okay, so, both. so regardless if we could come up with a cost that was uh, really great, didn't really wasn't going to cost a lot of money, but it felt that it was inequitable with the space. That's why I'd like that's to see where the, the But that's why I'd like to investigate the module. I think that, because okay. that would. I think that is awesome. Right I think there. it's a good idea. There we, need, yeah. we do need to give Stockbridge more space, because you guys, you guys don't have enough space. Yeah. You only have three classrooms, right? Four. Four classrooms. Right, it's not well, a lot and, of space. They have talked about adding space for pre-K and right, because things, it has a so. full day. Um, We've talked well. about it, but this might be a, a, an answer to that actually. Right. Because there when some, we got, remember when we got the bids last year, it was expensive to do it. Well, remember that that's not a that's not a long-term answer. Right, right, right. Know, but it's, 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 it's temporary. It's, it's two things, two things to keep in mind, Jane. When we were looking at the modular unit last time. We were looking at the house pre-K program, so that meant that meant you've got a modular unit that has to have some sort of plumbing. It has a lot more, yeah, a lot right. more. That's why I thought, you know, it might be, it might, it, it would probably be a lot less expensive right. to bring something in that doesn't need to have the bathroom yeah. facilities for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. That could be, you know, a, a, a space that, you know, isn't necessarily because it's not being used every all day, every day. You don't have to worry about it. You know, the the, the no, class like trying to eat something. Idea. Gives you know, it, 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 it gives it, it, right. it gives a space that we can we can expand out into because you know as, as as Jenny says it's you know yes when you have to you you have uh, you know we don't have you know one of the things that, that happened we had a, a we we had a, 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 we've we've had, well, we've had student issues but we don't have a place a, place, a, a seclusion room or a place where the where where the kid can be removed. To, 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 to regain control of him or herself and, and then be reintegrated. So, I mean, the ability to move. We don't have a room like that. I mean, we badly needed bad. You don't have something like that? Here? No. What, uh, all these bedrooms are. are, are <laughs> yeah. No, but none of these, we don't, have, we don't have a room. We're not using a room like that. We don't, we don't have oh. a room set up for that right now. We, knock on wood, we don't need one. That's a, one of these little offices could be turned into that. But we just don't have a need for okay, it. Right yeah. Okay, okay. No, that's fine. I just like. We have room. space for it. No, I, I was looking at like six bedrooms and go, <laughs> yes. you don't have a room where you can do <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, thinking about uh, just how we can, you know, like, will, you know, you, you the, the, that's a, that's a, a fairly large tech support room for. It's right there. Yeah. That's I mean, that's, that, yep. that, that's, do you need, I mean, I don't know that you would need no. that much tech coverage no. for, this for is an the elementary room school. This is the room we're actually thinking about for the tech room, which is the little, uh, where the athletic director is there right across from the office. Right, it's right. We don't need, we don't need an athletic office. director's office anymore. <laughs> that's gone. We don't um, have one. You know, we can, uh, you know, and will there still, I mean, how often will the tech, I, mean, I don't know what the schedule is for here and, and there going forward. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be reduced because they're high school. In Stockbridge and maybe. I think a day a here. A little more okay. than that here. But yeah. Right. So, you know, that, that, that might be a person that doesn't need to have, I mean, they need well, some except, storage space. Except their issue is they keep stuff up and running. So they plug things in and walk away and come back in two days and see how they're. Right, I don't right, but I mean, my, 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 so. my, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that's a person that you could say, fine, if you got to test something or, or burn something in, that could maybe be done in the in the locker room space, um, you know, because the so guys they, here once a yeah. day, once a week, and they're kind of, right as, 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 a, as, a tech, as a tech person, I, we're, we're kind of mopey. You're kind of mopey. Yeah. 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 Our screen, you know, we're in that screen. Yeah. Sorry, Mason, we, we kind of do get in there. So um, we have the... Um, 
vault. Do we have a, a vault over here at the high school? Mm -hmm. And so that would need to be moved to the elementary school. Or it could it, be maintained here, depending on because we don't we don't need access to it daily. Okay. I mean, there's some stuff stored in now just because people put some office supplies in there. In the vault. Yeah. yeah. But it, okay. All right, so next step is we're going to get a We don't need a modular vault in Stockbridge. No, but <laughs> we're okay with sharing your vault. You guys, I would like Stockbridge to be able to have more space because yeah. how are we supposed to bring more, more programs to Stockbridge if there's no space for them? No, I agree with that. I agree like with that. That's why it is. How are we going to do STEM in Stockbridge right. if there's no space? So let's look no, into how to think that's, more I, space. I think, that, I think that's a good idea. And like I said, I think that our first look at a, at a trailer when we're looking for a yeah. pre-K program, a lot of the, I think a lot of the expenses that were in that were for the, the, the well, because the, of pre-K regulations and, and, and all that. Do you remember what the cost was? We ought to tour. We ought to tour Sharon because they have an awesome you know, pre-K program in temporary. Right, but it's now, been permanent. Yeah, that'll, that'll, permanent. That'll, that'll make that'll, 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 that if, if if you show people that in their minds, the price tag will go up. Because yeah, but the, the, they'll want something nice. For the movie. It didn't cost them a whole heck of a lot of money. I mean, no. It was, well, Barrett, where is yeah, this? Barrett got them used, Barrett. right? Elementary. Hmm? Barron got the Barrett got them used. Those the Lebanon, are, yes. Right, and, and then he's now put a foundation under them and and uh, roofs on them, and uh, they're pretty permanent now. Right. So, right, but I mean, I think it'd be it, it, it might be a, a, a good way to. A, a good way to start up and bridge and if you bought something used and then we ended up doing something more permanent because as we see how things work out um, we either we either, like you said you do what everyone does around here and you put a foundation under the under the modular home and you, you put a, a better roof across the top of it and maybe some external insulation but we also have to remember we need to keep moving forward on this but Rome was not built in a day yeah. No. Absolutely. We absolutely. Need, we I'm just saying looking, that we can't. We need to be looking. Right. Right. Far, I just, I, and yeah. taking the right steps to get there. Right. And that's one of the reasons. Of one of the, the, the last. The, the last point I was trying to make about the modular idea was just yeah. that it's something that I think we're not committing to trying to build an addition on Stockbridge this summer. Right. So that we have we have a space there. Right. We're, we're 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 putting something in so that we have a solution that that you know in, in two years if it change if, if if we do say you know what we do need an addition like over this. here or we let we're, we're yeah. this is how things it's are going to work out. For now. It's, a, it's a make them feel good for now. Well, no, but well, I no, mean, but it's, well, it's, 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 it's a it's a solution. Feel. I'm just no, saying no. that's how I feel. Well, if no, it, if it's it not. The, the point is, is that is our kids the, right now. I'm talking about our kids right now. Ask Jenny yeah. how she feels about this. Oh, you know how I feel. Well, right. I think it's going to change his heart. It is, yeah. it is not. Well, we're, we're, well, I think I, I don't I know think, how else I can get a music room, or I, 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 how no, we can I get make that, a decision for but that. But I mean, I don't know why you need a music room. You have a, that whole huge gymnasium. Like, why can't I don't know it, Joanne? So I really what? Want to go we should go over there. Really it's huge. To see it. Yes, no, I understand I mean, the gym is huge. It's but huge. I, I also think one of the things we have to do is we have to do more than imagine what. It would be like to have band in a gym. I think you have to go stand in the classroom next to it when the band is playing is and, and say, but I've what? heard your teacher say that they can hear the band and it's sure. disruptive. Sure. Actually, your teachers have said that band is disruptive to them when it's going on. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, that's just their observation. I can't imagine there's any school that has band in a gym that isn't disruptive to the classrooms right around it. That's just, that's just the way it is. Um, I, and I understand how hard this change is. I'm, I'm on the board over the mountain and we unified seven schools two years ago and we consolidated and brought some smaller schools together and for different functions and it, it, none of them, none of those things are easy to do. Sure. And I think that a lot of these, but, I mean, a lot of these solutions are going to have, you know, a, 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 a negative side. I mean, you know, it's it, saying, okay, you know, we're bringing in a place to have special so that we can use our, we can, we can have more space in the Stockbridge, but you're gonna have to walk outside, you know, to get there is, 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 is less, you know, it's less accessible than walking down the hall. Maybe handicapped you know? accessible? Yeah. Um, I sure. think that, you think know, but I think what, I think hard. where we yeah. need, yeah, it has yeah. to be here too. Yeah. And and it can be. Yes. You know, I think, that, I think that what we need to, what, what we need to be, to be doing before we, before we move into the budget numbers, is is acknowledging that we need to come up with some creative thinking to to, to keep a sense of equity and to keep a a, a sense of fairness and, if and it, you know I, like i said i don't think the answer is to say fine you guys all have to cram into and in, in, in teach class teach your, your special kids uh your sped kids in the hallway but i think we need to you know right. we need to, to sort 
to, to, to sort all this so that everyone feels that. And if the informal information that's coming in is anywhere near accurate, we may be in a situation where, at least for next year, we pretty much stay where we are. So we will, the informal information says we'll have to continue to heat this building. So maybe the programs that are on the high school map, maybe they stay right where they are for next year. Art, music, one planet, maybe they don't move. Classroom programs stay right here. And, um, it, 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 it may not even be possible. Let's just say the board decides to make this move. Yes, we'd like it to go into the high school. It may not even be possible to do that by September based because we don't know yet what we have to do nor what the cost of having to do it is. So in many ways, we're still just sure, absolutely. third or fourth step in a pretty long journey yeah. here. Absolutely, but we need let's we need let, let's get the information. Yeah. Let's also let's also take this as a as 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 a signal that you know we we have to look at what we're doing for both campuses of this district right. and make sure that that you know everyone a, 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 no kid is feeling like a second class citizen. Lonnie, does family and consumer science pertain to elementary? No, we don't have that program. Okay, we could move. I mean, if we if we needed to um, heat the, the idea, I thought was to kind of turn down this section to a, a, like a cooler temperature right. and keep that section. You and know, that's one of the questions. Right. That's one of the. So if if we did that, can we not just keep our art and music over there? Yes. And then have our kids walk over. And not, and then we could even move one planet exactly into the family the F, and consumer side. Right. The only really warm room over there, right. anyway. So one of the questions on our list is, can we do exactly that? How low can the heat go down over here? Yeah, and can we maintain use over there? But it does make sense to have them all in the same section. No, it, it makes I perfect think sense. Then spread yes, out, like it's shown. That doesn't make sense. It makes no, perfect sense. Absolutely move. If we're going to heat that and still be able to use those two classrooms a couple days a week because we have to keep that side heated and we can cool this side down, then we can move one planet into the FCS room and then this side, I mean, there's doors. You know, there's a door here, there's, there's a lobby, there's ways to shut down the school, I or think. Or a blanket. More official. There's like. ways to more <laughs> to insulate <laughs> the There is. Sure. Come on, we're from Rogers, you know how that is. Um, <laughs> give, all, give all the sixth graders, get that, that shrink wrap stuff and tape yeah. it up. And there you go, exactly. Like, Here go. They can um, have an energy efficiency. Um, <laughs> so also program. when they're looking at the uh, heating and if if their only reason that they couldn't um, go below a certain temperature in certain areas is because of the sprinkler system being charged, I think our next question is then what is the cost to make it a not charged system? That, that's on our list. Okay. And okay. the other question that's on our list is can you make this a not charged system and that over there stay charged because I believe we'll be in fire code violation if we have kids in this building and you dismantle the sprinkler system. I don't, I don't mean dismantle it. No, I, I'm, I'm, when I'm, can we keep them, that one on and this one discharge it? Oh, okay. I guess I was also thinking um, that uh, that is one way. The other option is to make the system so that it's still a sprinkler system. It's just, it's air in the lines and when it gets triggered, the water goes through. Right. Which is what the, is in the firehouse in Rochester. So. I'm assuming that that is That's possible. Oh, yep. You know. I'm assuming it is if it's in there. I don't know How a lot do about you know that. Well, she talk. <laughs> That's a lot of people. <laughs> Amy knows a lot of things. Have that you met my daughter? Because she is so upset at me whenever we go anywhere. Come on, mom. You gotta talk to this person again. Come on, mom. Yeah. So um. <laughs> Okay, thank you. You're okay. Budget. Yep. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. You're on now. Do we have things. a new budget to pass around? I do, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm passing around. Great. Okay. I think that if I read the tea leaves in on this board, what I perceive is some frustration that we're now further along with the budget than we are. I know I, for one, as a business manager, feel that frustration. Mm -hmm. I know that um, in Fresh Branch Unified District, where I was last night presenting the budget, they have developed a similar schedule for working on the budget. In fact, next week they have a meeting on Monday and Thursday, two nights. The following, meet meeting, the following week they have one meeting where they finalize the budget and then they want it that night. 
and the annual meeting is one day apart from the annual meeting from this board of this district. Um, last night, after putting in significantly more than 100 hours, I was able to, de to develop the budget process for them so that I can meet on a Monday with them and on a Thursday and still get the stuff done in between because things are lined up in a particular direction and because the board has made clear what their goals and objectives are. My experience here is that things are not lined up, so we're not ready to do that. So you're going to see some things tonight, some things that have really made solid, pretty good, and some things that maybe even took a half a step back. Because in trying to get everything lined up, things got thrown out to whack. It's also been a challenge for me personally, to professionally, not personally, professionally, to hear the multitude of voices that I hear from this board and try and respond to each of them. And so I think if we're going to make, be successful next week in getting to the budget for the, getting it out on, on the 10th, this board's going to need to, to um, work more closely at getting a, a, a common voice and giving common directions and clear directions to me and to Bruce. Because part of the, 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 the not being where I want to be, where, where you want me to be, is dealing with a multitude of questions about this, that, and the other thing instead of the clear direction. The one clear direction that I have, and that's what I'm going to hand out first, is the tuition question. Because that's what I heard from a, a number of uh, board members, that there was real, real frustration and concern that uh, tuition numbers were not what they needed to be. The accuracy was not there. So with, I didn't have over 100 hours to work on this budget, but I did on first branch, and you'll get your 100 hours in due course, but this is for tonight. Um, so what I did devote some significant time in was working on the on the tuition payments, which is a large part of our budget. So it makes sense to prioritize that as a and because it was always a, a board concern. So what I want to tell you, what I, I want to tell you what you're seeing here. What you're seeing here is you'll notice that in both columns there's a double line going horizontally across. Everything below the double line. Do you see that in? In Rochester, it's below the ninth grade students, yep. and in Stockbridge, it's below the seventh grade students. All those, all those students that are identified as eight one or nine four or whatever, are specific students who are on tuition bills for this year. And so, eight one is somebody who is a seventh grader this year, and we're expecting them to move on to eighth grade next year and we know where they're going this year, and so we expect we'll continue there until we, we learn otherwise. So that's the one of the pieces that goes into the solidity that's behind these numbers. Um, so there are specific people that, everything below the double line is, double horizontal line is specific students and the particular place where they are, with a few exceptions. For example, students that are identified as coming who are residents of Rochester who are coming to Rochester this year, and there are several um, who are ninth graders this year. The, the assumption was made that they would, since there wouldn't be a high school here next year, that they would be somewhere else. And so the logic, until I hear a better logic, is to put them into to the Royalton High School or to the, what will be called the White River Valley High School in Royalton, South Royalton. Um, so that's, that's an assumption that goes over here. Um, and likewise, there were a lot of students who were, who have been taking part in the, Beth who have been participating, enrolled in the Bethel uh, middle, school. middle School, High School. Um, and yeah. they, they have been also migrated to the Royalty to the so you're putting them in as placeholders, correct? And as placeholders. And this is because we haven't we haven't heard that they're going anywhere else. Right. This is on the Rochester side or on, on the both sides. Can I make this, I want to say um, I yes. do think that by saying that most of our students might go to Royalton, that's a significant um, you know sixteen thousand dollars. And I, I do feel most of our families will choose Middlebury or Randolph or Shire Academy. Um, as our probably our big ones. That's where a majority of our students that tuitioned out. And I think that the cost of the difference of tuition between Royalton and Middlebury, I think we should try to balance that. I guess they're not too bad, too different apart. No. But we just have to make sure yeah. that well, they're they're okay. just what he's saying I think is it's just a name right now. That's no, I'm just making sure that the But there's a dollar there's a dollar, dollar, dollar attached to, 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 to it to the school that these kids are going to. So I don't want to underestimate by saying our kids are all gonna go to Royalton where it's 
know, $673 less to go when in reality we're going to be paying Middlebury tuition or Randolph tuition. But you say that there's only three, four Rochester students that he's placed in Royalton and those are all ones that are currently enrolled in? Okay, and then, yeah, that's right. And Whereas the before the double the line, yeah. there's actually like five. So that's five, gives yeah. you a good balance. So before okay. we get to the, well, I talked about before the double line, but let's, let's talk five. about after the double line first. We're talking about one topic okay. at a time. So is it the mind of the board that you would rather have a budget that was more conservative, raising more tax dollars to a higher tuition uh, assumption than a lower tuition assumption? I think that's what I heard you say. Was the sixteen thousand? I guess if it's only six hundred and seventy-three, six hundred and seventy-three dollars. I guess it's not that big of a difference. But I, I just think, don't want to throw things off. I think though that we have it. We have um, all overestimated with the amount of kids going to Woodstock that's is a true. lot higher than. That is true. That was deliberately chosen. Yeah, okay, because okay, okay. but also okay. TSA is a lot lower. So it, I mean it. To and then where's out. what's Middlebury? Middlebury is kind of in between. Yeah, What's Oak Meadow? Is that an online homeschool? It is more or less like that. Yes. So and there's another year. one at seventh grade. So this year we're in. We've got two there's Stockbridge. Two, this residents. is for next year. So we need eight. Okay. So those are your seventh. Okay. okay. So you did a balance. I'm sorry. Yeah. You did so do it. Yeah. Balance. Okay. Balance. okay. Everything's oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What yeah. is the meaning of the double line? The double line is every every student below that is on is on a is on a. a Tuition invoice for the current year. So at, it's at the, next at the school, year. At the school yeah. where they where they are being so <coughs> estimated for next year, if it exists. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. The, the, for sorry. the rest, oh. of the are pretty, pretty much where the kids go. Bob. Bob. Don't kill it. Kill it. Uh -huh. it escaped. We stopped her snack. <laughs> <laughs> Protein. Did you want to save it? And do what with it? Let yeah. it go. Yeah. Take it to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> we got 20 acres. Take it to that forest. We still have 20 acres. It's a hard part. It was a hard part for my life. You jumped so much. I was scared of you. Let's get rid of it. So you can see okay. above, above. Eliminate the double that, Mason. <laughs> above the double line. <laughs> yep. There was an attempt to try and to balance things yeah. out by having a low cost. Yeah. TSA being a low cost and a high cost Woodstock. So that in absence of any other information, we've sort of got somewhere in the middle. I think that's a good idea. I'm sorry. I, I do yeah. feel like you were trying to go middle ground. And, and I am hopeful by our next meeting, at least on the Rochester side, a number of our kiddos who sort of hadn't been making decisions now seem to be making decisions. So hopefully we can get you some yep. specifics. If there is more information, it will be fed into it. Why is there a zero for the first uh, senior in uh, Rochester? Yeah, okay, that's right. That, that one is a choice student, an Act 150 choice student, ah. under which terms there, there is a vacancy in the receiving school and... Uh, so basically, so basically, no basic, right, 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 because it's, 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 it's under the quota, oh, it's under the lottery of the quota. It's the lottery, right, right. 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 and so, the, so basically Middlebury just had one spot, one spot, so we have to pay for the other three. And Evans pay number one and tour party next year. Okay. And five. <coughs> in Rochester. Right. And the, I like the way you say we. It's <laughs> not you, but that's about we. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> you gotta use the we word. All right. Yes, yeah, so I agree. So this is the meeting. David, this is this is this is so different from the one you passed out at the last meeting because more oh, students yeah. have made choices or what? No, this one is different because this this one I spent the time looking at tuition invoices. Yeah. One and this was also one of the topics that and there was a lot of miscommunication between now and the last meeting between staff at at Stockbridge and staff at the SU and board members and it sort of went this way and this way and this way. So I said I, I got to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. So that's what you have. You got the bottom of this. So this is where it really is. I mean, this, rep this represents oh, the yeah. paperwork or the commitments that are... Yeah, exactly. The yeah. <laughs> below the double line, there's an invoice for that student this okay. year in that school at the grade less than it is indicated here. Right. Which, Frank, I mean, it, 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 having not... Frank? Sorry. Having not, uh, having not been, been at a, a, a choice school, understand that, you know, even the, the, 
the, there, 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 there's a ton of certainty about the people below that double line, but there will still be kids that will change. Yeah. There will be there will be someone that uh, that uh, you know the families change where they work and the direction they're going, and so yes. that they drive the kid a, a different way. There's been a few at stock, not a ton, but I know a few students that have changed yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. So that mean, what does that mean for tuition loss? Do you get your money back from the school if you move a student? Like a, if a child decides to change the school mid-year, if the child decides to change the school, I think they most schools bill on a semester. Okay. So usually, if they they, they change, you lose the you, you, nice. you lose semester. In general, there's not a lot of. I mean, there've been times where I know that, like a kid has started somewhere, mm -hmm. and you know within like the first two weeks it just doesn't work out. Right. right. Then we've you know well that's that's too soon. There there. The billing usually comes somewhere around, at least in my experience, like a month and a half, six weeks or so okay. into the semester. And, you know, so sometimes the bill comes and then someone leaves and then, you know, it gets corrected. But in general, once you've paid Woodstock for a semester, if the kid leaves a month earlier or, or changes, it doesn't, okay. you know. They don't get credited. They don't get credited, but on the other hand, if they change to another public school, they don't, you know, the other public school, I mean, they, they go, you know, they go from Woodstock to Bethel and Woodstock collects some extra money and Bethel, Bethel, you know, Finishes educating the yeah. kid for a few months. Okay. okay. That, you know, does, that, that does that happen in some situations, but it often it's happens. Great. Often Thank happens you. that tuition is prorated by day. So mm -hmm. if you get a kid moving into your school on October one, that you as a receiving school, you're not going to educate them for nothing through to the end of the first semester. You're going to charge a bill. And I, I it, that yes, and that's well, that, that was that 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 is a fight that I've lost with Windsor Central. <laughs> there are some um, in the when, yes, when, when we trade kids, we like, well, we should prorate this by day. And they're like, nope, we we build for the semester. You're not, you know, you're not getting that money back. So it just depends how, how big a fist you have as to where you get your way around. Yeah. The other thing to know is that this year we have not, despite what you just said. The practice is, is varied in the field, mm -hmm. and we have not yet received a bill from Woodstock for the whole year. Oh. We have not received a single bill. So, yes, this Maybe is how the system usually it. works, but there are as many exceptions as there are. Let's not say that too loud that everybody just forgot about yeah. it. Yeah. It's My experience camera. is it comes back to haunt you. Yeah. 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 Two yeah. years down the road, you'll get your bill. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's yeah. actually a big thing. So think we have been pursuing the bill, but they've been as busy as we have been. I'm sure implementing new accounting software. We are do doing the training together. So we know our kind of parts down there very well. And we know what they're going to and, and undergoing. And anyway, so so what, what you see here is data that's being scrubbed down to the bone. Yeah, thank you. Excellent, and thank I, you. Uh, I, I, I realized that was what you were looking for, something that I wanted to produce on day one, but I couldn't do it on day one, but it's on day whatever we are on now. <laughs> So this, and this has been incorporated into the budget. Great. And as things change here, as we get more information, and it's really a crapshoot how you interpret the value of new information. So it may be that a parent goes into the principal's office, to Bonnie's office, and says, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to take my kids out of Royalton and put them over here. So, so Bonnie tells me, oh, there's three kids that are now going over here. You've got to evaluate with how, how useful that information is if you really want to go that way or yeah. not. Yeah, we in, in, in our it's experience, an art form as well as the science. In, in our experience, especially because with uh, you know little kids, the, the, in a lot of parents' minds, it's a lot more fluid about where they can fit and where they could you know they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll flower wherever they land. Yeah. Um, you know, it's we really wait because the parents are. I'm going to take them there, and then they often don't. We in our experience, we don't shift things until we know. So we've seen a piece of paperwork. You know the, the records request from the from the new from from the new uh, uh, LEA. And the other thing that happens, as I've seen it in many districts, is that over the summer, two buddies on the same street no, yeah. are talking yeah. about where where oh I'm going I'm going back to U32 or whatever it is. You know, talking about Roxbury experience now. So all of a sudden, all this, all this, all the high school students in Roxbury start going to U32 right because all their buddies are going there, and that changes in end of July. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know it's sixth graders. Mom wants him to go one place. He wants to. <laughs> so who's going to win? <laughs> so that's the that's the best we can do for right now. <laughs> now we have the, the budget itself, and I'm calling this 
and changing the naming to try and get it simpler to make make it easier for us all to refer to it in the same time. Oh, okay. It's like I couldn't find a draft forge in. When you sent me that message, yeah. I couldn't find a form. Bam. You, you said yeah. draft forge. I had three and five. I don't think it's had a number, so I was calling it four. Oh, oh maybe, yeah, because I was looking for a four. So. Yeah, I was like, I was awesome. Okay, this is just an expansion question. So let me That's give you a clue. Right. Every document okay. that you see that I would produce, if you look at the bottom, you'll see the file name. So whatever it says at the top here, the, the file name should be down here and the, and the, uh, the worksheet number. So this one tells you that this is FY19 RSUD budget draft 5, and it's the expenditure worksheet in that budget. So I, as, a root, as a routine, <coughs> there may be an odd 1% of the time I don't do it, but this is, this is one way to know where you are when you're looking at a whole bunch of numbers. So you can look up here at the top and try and, I think I've found a way of calling it now which will be useful for us to be all on the same page so that if somebody won't look and say, well, I didn't get a draft four. So now there's a date where it says updated for 328 yep. and it says draft five. Okay. So when I work on draft six for the next meeting, I will be working with the principals and we will have up, up maybe it'll be updated 330. Great. And when it finally gets ready for the board, it will be updated for 43, which is, I think it's the time next date of our next meeting. And it will be called draft six. So what what I one of the, what more I just uh, done a quick check to see that the salary amounts are correct related to the salary and benefit worksheets that are, in, that are in the budget that flow into here automatically. Those salary and benefits are 80, 90% lined up, but there's still another 10% to line them up. They are lined up in first branch so that on, on Tuesday when we meet next week, and somebody says we want to move from a 0.6 to a 0.4, I can just change a 0.4 and all the benefits will automatically come through and see the meeting. They asked if we could have it done during the course of the meeting, and in the context of that, I'm going to say that the next meeting I will bring with me a projector so that we will look at the screen so we will be all on the same page, on the same page, on the wall. Okay. Yeah, we have something up there. So yeah. Whatever it is, I don't know what technology we have in the different places we meet, but I want yeah, to this will this will work. So, okay. so with having said that, there's a couple of smaller areas that have been tweaked so that, for example, on in column A on row 15, I made it explicitly clear that field trips is excluding the busing. Okay. Because it was not in the number. Can and I the bus will shop somewhere else. And the bus Can I ask a question about that yeah. line since we're there? Um, why is the cost over in the personnel? Is that um, this 350 and is it is that the cost for? No, you're right. You're right. That is an error. Okay. That needs to go across over here. Okay. Thank you. So that's a good catch. Uh -huh. yeah, is there a revenue budget too? There is not tonight. No. But there will be on the next meeting. Add a tax, tax impact. Okay. So I think probably the, the the discussion that is most one of the points that would be useful for the board to be clear about is the FTEs between the two schools. And so if there's any concern about that, uh, talking about that tonight so that it can be prepared for the next meeting in a, in a way that the board would like to see it. So I, I believe those numbers are, are uh, true in there. The, the guidance is the one in Rochester and point three in Stockbridge. Jenny, what what? Um, what no, fourteen? Yeah, that was one of my questions. Is what does what do we need a full time guidance for? Well, so Bonnie and I talked about this, okay. and uh, she is prepared to explain it to you. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for the that was Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> but almost I don't want to restate the obvious, but she feels very strongly that this is important yeah, okay. and wanted to be able to defend it. So. Okay. One of the one of the issues is, and I, I, I know I keep saying this, and I, I don't want it to sound trite, because day to day it has an impact. There is a difference between 50 youngsters and 90 youngsters. And, and the family dynamics and the family situations and the outreaches. We've also eliminated our SAP counselor. Um, you'll see on line 106, uh, 
we took all of the SAP counselor funds out. One of the one of the situations we we believe is that there were uh, sometimes too many people working with the family can be difficult. The family can't sort out who's who. Who's who. So we opted to go with the guidance counselor who um, is prepared to do the work, um, the home visits, the home contacts, um, the family work, that, and then move into the typical guidance ed group kinds of things that you would typically see um, a guidance counselor do. So in, in many ways, um, you know, I don't think 1.0 is, is that out of line. If, if we look at point three at Stockbridge and we, we have not exactly twice as many kids, but close to it, that would put it at 2.6. And then picking up the SAP services. Um, Did Stockbridge have SAP? Yeah, it's happened here, yeah. yeah. You guys, what, what is SAP? Yeah, student assistance. Drug and alcohol it's a, it's prevention, drug and alcohol uh, work. counseling, uh, substance counseling. So not behavior issues necessarily. <laughs> and is that, that is typically a elementary school? Typically SAP counselors do, do a great deal of work with high school age right. students. What our dilemma is at the elementary school is we have parents who are dealing with those challenges. Yes, we have a number of them actually. And it impacts a, a significant number of youngsters at our school. Yeah. And this was not a decision that we made lightly. It was a decision that we really felt um, we needed to provide this level of service. And I guess the difficult news I have for the board is that that's a growing number. It's not a lessening number. And we I know, are I... trying at, at the other schools to push it down lower so it's more preventative than it is crisis later on so uh, yeah. we're, we're having these conversations at the middle school and, and uh, the new middle school uh, where do we put that that SAP counselor so that they can be the most effective and try to work on prevention and stuff. now but do we, we, we get any um, uh, funds for uh, this type of you know from government or yes uh, if yes to be, for this type of counseling specifically so. for family crisis and, and, and the addiction, alcohol, drugs, stuff that we get? The, it's one of the title areas that we do receive some money from. Um, and does that offset then I this, don't know how much. this salary maybe? Well then, what, if, the then why did you cut SAP services out? Because the guidance council can't help with that. Yes, the guidance council can do that work at, at the elementary level, do educational groups, um, decision making. So does SAP do that for us? You have, SAP was in your budget it last. the same thing in both schools. Last right. year. Who's a, who's so why can't you just at, do with SAP? SAP counselor at, at Amelia. You know, we don't believe it's anywhere near enough, Jane. I'm, I'm sorry, I think you can't see us very well over here. I think Joanne had a question. I'd like another uh, head count, and I'd like it accurate this time. And I don't think homeschoolers should be included. I didn't include homeschoolers. Well, in that's not the information that I got. Maybe it's er erroneous, but I, I've been told that there's a lot less than 90 in the school. Who did you get your information from? I'm not going to say because I don't want her to get in trouble. But there, I was told that it was closer to 75. And I think that's really important. I, I, I can go get the numbers right now as soon as we're done this discussion. I'd appreciate but, that. But it is not, it's not 75. I mean, I, I, actually, you know what? I might have that right here for you. Good okay, thank you. Good. No, I think I have it. I don't know Sorry, I what we need today. for these students, but I do understand um, specifically in Rochester that there is a lot of family stuff going on. I mean, I, I sat down at a lunch table and the kids were openly talking about what was happening at home um, where steps of that their parents were in recovery from and they're just I mean I sat down and they're within two minutes are talking to me about it and then the kid across oh yeah well my mom was a drug addict too but um, she's she's better now but I still can't see her till I'm 18 years old I mean this is we we had there the, we, there's it's not just Rochester, but it's everywhere. There's this That's huge what I'm epidemic. I, yeah. I, don't I don't know what the right Rochester answer is, but we need to support these kids. They need a, a place to talk about this and how to deal with it. They, you know. I, can, I can only speak 
for Rochester, but we have a number of youngsters, I believe, who are basically raising themselves. They're basically responsible for themselves. Can we, One of, I just want to stop and say this, just this is a sidebar to this conversation, it's very important. Bruce, can you please make sure that the staff at Stockbridge and that the staff at Rochester understand the mandatory reporting laws? Because if kids are actively talking about, I mean, there's there there are I, I just heard like three things that at least yeah, the mandatory yeah, reporting yeah, training that I've gotten yeah, would, 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 would would trigger a call. And okay. at least the news we've heard is that it may be it may, it may well be because sometimes the AOE, you know, is 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 more interested in, 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 in tripping up uh, the independent schools than they are, than they cut, they cut more slack towards the, the, the public schools. And I, I'm not trying to, to get into that conversation now, but at least the stuff that I hear about mandatory reporting, there, you know, I, I, I think it's important that everyone knows because there's, there, there is a big pile of, 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 of trouble that comes down if, you know, well, if one of these kids, I mean, you don't have that, 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 that DCF history of all the mandatory reporting no, these calls are, being these made. these are kids that I know are through the DCF system. They're we, we, living with grandparents now. Right, right. But, I'm just, but to hear yeah. that, hearing that conversation, it just reminds me, because like one of the rules, one of the laws, parts of the law that just changed, is it used to be that if I, was at the, if I worked at a school and I heard something that involved a child living in neglect or a child uh, 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 living with parents that are unable to care for them because... They're, 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 they're under the influence. Um, you know, I could tell the principal, and the principal would say thank you, and I, I, I was done. But the, 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 the rules now are, if I heard it, I have to say it. And if it was said, in a, in, in, if it was said at this table, um, um, you know, David, me, Bonnie, and Bruce would all have to call. I mean, we could make a call together. The, you're allowed to, as a group, file a report, but every every impl school employee is required to report within 24 hours, and it's a it's a fairly you know granular and it's not just you know Bobby came to school with a black eye because because drunk daddy hit him, it's it's just just neglect, it's it's those kinds of things, you know the kids that are raising themselves. We do this training every year. Right, but I, I, I just I just you know we're all mandatory reporters, and if we don't report and get caught doing that, we will lose our license. Right, and that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I, that's why I wanted to stop the conversation to make sure that, that we're reviewing that with our staff and that, and that, and that you know, it's on the record that, that we're doing that properly and that, because that's not an area where you can, you know, you can say, oops, sorry. Hand, yeah. I think the I want to think, oh, I'm sorry, Bonnie. I think I'm, I really want to examine this area because I don't think it should just be based on numbers. I, from what I've heard this year at Stockbridge, there's a fair number of real family issues which are causing extreme behavior issues in at least two of the classrooms. Also, although our numbers are smaller, our special ed budget is more. So I don't know that we can just go by numbers. I don't no, think that, that it's not, it's not the numbers. guidance and, and everything is needed at, with the families at Stockbridge as well. There's a crisis in two of those classrooms. The only reason I mention numbers here is numbers do generate more families typically to work with, more kids in crisis, more situations that have to be retracted, more mandatory reporting. Our guidance counselor, you're exactly right, Pearl. Um, everyone who sees a particular incident that carries a license is a mandatory reporter in the school. But guidance counselors tend to be sort of the channeling mechanism to make sure those reports are completed, make sure they're done in a timeline, then follow up with the child, then follow up with the family, because for every report you make, you've got a child who's just experienced another type of trauma, and you just can't make the report and say, okay, that's enough response from the school. The other thing we're hoping to do through this model is have guidance in schools typically is once a week. The SAP counselor would come, that would be somebody else, so that might be a second time a week. What, what the model we're looking for, because we think it's more efficient, is that it would be the guidance counselor that would be in every classroom twice a week, instead of one person being there one time and one person being there another time. So we're trying to consolidate the effort. That leads to more relationship building. It also leads to more people knowing what's happening. It leads to more um, trust on the part of some families. The other big issue we have to address here, and I, I need to let the board know this because I think it's going to be ongoing. I don't know how this is reflected in Sockridge. We have probably 30 youngsters, if not more, who are tardy 40, 50, 60 days out of the school year so far. Some who have missed 17, 19, 21, 34 days of school. 
they just don't show up they just don't come and the guidance counselor is doing um, getting more and more involved in those situations I'm moving forward with um, two if not three DCF mandatory meetings for with parents who simply do not get their children to school on any sort of a regular basis that number is also growing so we hear about this crisis we have this opioid crisis we have in the state of Vermont schools reflect it day in and day out the youngsters of those situations end up in our school doors and I'm sure they're in Stockbridge's. Do you, do you think the, for, I don't know what the right thing is, but for Stockbridge, do you think that the SAT should be combined similarly down into guidance? I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to get we better, can, if we're going to get better serve, consider. yeah. Is Mary Dolan the, and so what is her point, four, point six? She's point, she's our guidance counselor, she's point three. It's what it point is. Point three. It's what it is. Yeah. Right, and who's the, and, and is she doing, is she, just, just, just being paid out of the SAP line as well, or is she not? Is she only there point three, I'm and not then sure there's someone else? The SAP. So there's someone separate for the SAP. Well, well I, is it I'm, Amelia? Amelia. Who's Amelia? But the dog, true. Yes. Yeah. Have you ever seen them? So would that be a possibility mm -hmm. to give that Mary Dolan? Um, is there a to follow that same? Well, is there a reason you're not following that same one? Somewhere else. So she's only available. So she could only do that. Well, I, I, I mean, things change, but she doesn't just work in Stockton. She works in right. No, but I just, I mean, just, we just heard the reasons why, it, you know, having one person, you know, following through yeah, right. and being consistent right. versus being tag teamed by the, the SAP, you know, the, the, yeah. the guidance counselor dealing with the kids' problems and the SAP person dealing with the parents' problems. You know, we probably, I mean, that same model, I, I would the think, would be the thing we want to do in Stockbridge. And I understand that if Mary's schedule doesn't allow her to, 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 to take, you know, the, the, the extra money and the extra hours, that, that wouldn't be an option. But I, I, I'd be interested in hearing at the next meeting. Um, I'd have to go back and find out whether some of her funding comes through SAP or whether... Right, well, that would be good. It would be, I mean, it would, it, would, it would be good to know that. It would be good to be giving that same type of, uh, you know, uh, a thought to the Stockbridge campus. And I, I have, I'm sorry, I have the numbers here. Just on the head count, we have 86 youngsters without our three-year-old preschoolers because we don't know, we haven't done... And when uh, was that done? Um, I usually date everything. This was done about a month ago. Prob one nine. About a month ago. One nine, I think it's... Oh, and those are, that doesn't include homeschool. Oh, sorry, one nine ten. Hmm. No, it doesn't include homeschool. So I don't know where you got your information, but it's, it's not, it's just, accurate. it's just not accurate. So the information is there is the difference perhaps that that uh, uh, how many how many tuition how many tuition kids are here? Yes, that's what that yes yeah, you can't count the tuition kids. Yeah, you can. I you can. Oh, you can because they have. So this is the, this oh, is the, the, this, this yeah, is the expenditure. The exactly. Okay. Can't right. count them for finances. Right. They have to count them for services right. because they're here. Right. Right. We got. We still got to give them a sandwich and yeah. let them have let them use the bathroom. Is the information you got maybe um, excluding the preschool four year olds? No, because it was the same for ours. Okay. It was uh, just a, as an idea. Right, yeah. right. It was, I was not including, because you can't count on those tuition kids next year. They may follow their older siblings going to other schools. That's definitely something that could happen. If they know they're not going to continue, they may right. go right. to the elementary school that's connected to their high school. Right. That's, some, that's something you should think about. Well, I, I think we always think about that, but right now we have to provide a service plan for the youngsters who we believe are going to be here. Right. Yeah. This is our chance. But would we here. ask, are you going to ask the tuition students if they are going to continue to come back? I, mean, I hope so. That so we have, I think the, the issue budget. in Hancock and Granville is that they, it's problematic, more problematic for to have the young young ones on a bus a long distance, the yeah, middle school and high school kids Greenville. seem to do okay with that, but uh, the younger kids maybe not so much. All right, half an hour over to Middlebury. That's what I heard. They don't want to send the like babies over to Middlebury. It's way different so than to, to, to Rochester or right. Granville. Right, they would be with their siblings. That's all. It's different. So if, there, if there's times when the say there's no one in guidance in Stockbridge and there's availability from the Rochester person. Could they come over? Yes. Of course. You know, of course. that's one of the things. That's what this is all about. That's, that's what this is about. Right. And that's yeah. what yeah. Right. If right. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly if there is a uh, crisis. Let's say youngsters right. walk through the door one day and say A, B, and C happened, and you know, 
you have classroom <coughs> teachers and a principal and a cook and an art teacher and they're like well yeah. I mean yeah and and the purpose of this is to try to do that you know right. more and more all the time I mean we've talked about that already with music and uh, it just seems and this is a necessary service, and you know. Yeah. I'm the music, I thought we were going to a point four per song. That's what we were trying, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's point two listed on here. So I had to put that And the point I'd like to. I don't think David believed it was finalized. That's what this nice discussion is about, is to see what the board wants to have. Right, well, but the, 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 I mean, we want to, let's, 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 let, let's let David finish going through this, um, you know, group by group, and, or just, I don't remember if we were walking through this when we stopped on the SAP stuff. No, we had gone from field trips and then, and then to, to directly over to, to guidance. I'd like to just say one thing that, to, to what Jenny's point is before we move on, is that if, if the board uh, can see its way to do that, um, you will always get higher caliber folks that will stay longer if you can have full-time yes, positions. Yes. I've been in a smaller school before where every year it's a rotating door. As soon as a full-time position comes up, Someone is applying sure. and hired if they're excellent, and so it's a good thing. To Stockbridge to has lucked out with a lot of their specials. Um, they get somebody who's working someplace and else, and, cool. and right. so you guys have benefited. Right. Right. Um, but the, the music forward. piece, the, the the music piece we had left it at was looking at what the day would look like and the week schedule would look like. You know, could could the it could if we if we increase the music uh, could one music person position, do both? Well, wait, could one person do both? And you know, we like that person. I think Ethan's point was that you know the the, the, the current teacher might like might like that role. We don't have a, a current music teacher. I don't believe we do. It's her first year. I forget what her name. Um, I thought was she staying? I thought that was something I remember. She was part of what we were I talking think about. That, I think, think, think we probably ought to go into non-public if we're going to go in to, go in go in to, oh, to right. this kind of thing. Right, you're right, you're right. No, no, I just thought we were in a non-public before. And I, I thought at last meeting it was, it, it, we should have been. And we probably <laughs> should at the cool. end, we probably should tonight at the end quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the, 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 to get back to the, 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 the thing we were waiting for from, from you guys was as far as, you know, Putting aside who would teach the expanded music position, would that work in the schedule? Would you have would you have time? You know, if you had a point four music teacher at Stockbridge, would, would they have would they have something to do? Would it you know would you be able to adjust all the other they said curriculum yes. pieces? When I asked them, the teacher said they would make they they really want, would like it and they were would they some, interested? What were their thoughts? That they they thought it would be a great idea and they would make room for it that they would be able to do that. In that kind of scheduling, we'd have to sit down because that would be a perfect time for us to do that. What can't you do? And when do you need music? And what can we move? And how do we make that happen? Right. Well, exactly. So that's that's where, I mean, that that that's not, at least in my mind, is not something that was left to the to the board. It was left. It was the board said, "Wow, that sounds neat. Um, how can you know? How can that work? You know, uh, uh, with, with with the day schedule, with the with the, the staff member schedule." Uh, and, and and then with all the other things, you know, the the the, the, the stuff we teach it besides music. So are we on nurse? Are we beyond that? Oh, I didn't think we had even started going through line by line yet. Well, we were yeah. we're talking about guidance. I'm just talking about the thing. Yeah. I just like I said, I didn't remember we got to guidance because David skipped there. No, we skipped. It up. We skipped around. I don't think nurse right now is 50 50. Is it? Isn't it 80 20? Yes, it is. Yeah, we're in stock for 20 days. Yes, it is. So. Yeah. Well, that's nice. So we're starting to do our dance around the circle. Yes, we are. So why don't you guide us back to where Sorry, we are? Yeah. Yeah. topic of the nurse. Yes, it used to be like this. But what is it the board wants to be working towards? What do they want to see in the budget next time around? Sounds well, like it's not 50-50. It is now. No, no. We but we can't. We just have a full-time nurse like we have now, and. It, it doesn't need to be determined whole, that it's. You don't have. A, oh, you mean for the whole? Yeah, for, for our district, for right our here. district, yeah. we have the the nurse, for a full time nurse as we do now. You don't have determined by campuses. need of of the campus. Right. We have right. point five here. Right. No, you point have five a point eight here. Uh, but point you know, eight, it really and you have a point two at Stockton. Point two. Right. So we have a person who's a who's a one FTE. I think what Amy's saying is, 
let's me have leave a one that. Point of, yeah, let's leave that right. one. Let's leave that, that and hurt. let's not let's not say we're sorry you fell on the playground, Susie. The nurse will be here tomorrow <laughs> to fix your knee and because say that we have we've got one nurse for the district, and that, that person's expectation is is he or she will go where they are needed yes. and will you know will 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 we'll do it from that. And this historically nurse is the one position that can bounce significantly from year to year if a very if a youngster moves in with a very high medical need we're going to have to sit down and move that position around to whichever so what are school. high medical needs this year in rochester uh we do have one yeah it's worked out since september but we did have a significant one the question i have is do you want to leave it as 50 50. Well, no, we're saying we're Doesn't leaving matter. it as 1.0 yeah, FTE yeah, for the yeah. district. And then we'll leave it on the budget for 50 50. Uh, and we'll just, it'll budget. be where it needs, it'll, the nurse will go where she needs to go, where he uh, needs yeah, to go. Exactly. So you can take the 50 and 50 off and just leave the 1.0. Right. Yeah. Well, you want to leave it, you want to leave it that, you know, it's it's, it's a joint resource. It's shared, right. it, it's shared between both. So leave it there, leave it there as 50 50. We're just saying that it doesn't have to be, right. you know. Because none of us know who's going to show up in our, in our preschool population. Correct. Right. And you know, we, at a certain point of time, you know, these are these are elementary school kids. Yep. There's going to be a point in time where 80 percent of them have lice, and the nurse is going to need to spend a lot of time in that building, going through and doing the Coleman. You know. No, they're that, not allowed to do that. Not allowed to do that anymore. Oh. Which is a point of contention. Yep. No, nope, can't even send them home. Let's not can't talk about. Oh, we can talk about it later. <laughs> not now. We're in the midst of that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> So let me talk, Keep going, talk, David. Let me talk going. about the, the budget development process so far as what we've just been talking about the last 10 minutes at the nurse. Uh, one, of the things we, one of the things that we can do is that we can try and allocate percentages to, artificially, percentages. Sometimes it's real, sometimes it's artificial. So 50-50 is artificial because we've, we've the expression wise, wherever it's needed, wherever it'll be. So it's artificial in that respect. So one thing is to put, put it down at any number, 80, 20, 50, 50, 60, 40, any way you want to do it. The other way to do it is to not include that in column D and E and just have it in column F as a 1.0. That's what I'm suggesting. And so I think we that, don't that's need it broken out, Carmen? We do. For, for we have to have it broken out. For this year, for the merger document, we need to have a side-by-side. -side Comparison. For, for this first year? For the first year. Yes. That's in the Articles of Agreement. There has, that's why you're doing three budgets and not just one. Or that's why you've well, added all these extra columns. Yeah, but I mean, that's why, I mean, it's not, it's not really three budgets, but that's why it, it is yeah, well, segregated like so this. So what do you want to show? You want 80? I, I would well, just, just leave, it, leave it like it is, 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5. Because, you know, this is a person that's going to go where, they're, where, where, where they need to be. And if they don't need to be in one place over the other, they'll, they'll alternate. Which is basically what happens now. I right. know she's been called back from Stockbridge one day to come up here because of an injury, and I know she was called down to Stockbridge one day because of something. I don't know if it was an injury or situation, but, and that's just what happens. Yeah, no, and, and I mean, I, I think the, 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 the difference here, of that the difference here is that, is that, you know, art is scheduled, P is scheduled, music is you know, music is scheduled, the classroom activities are all scheduled. Those FTEs, you know, are really fixed to a building. This FTE. Is, is, is shared and roams, roams back and forth. So if we follow the same logic that's just been expressed in the last minute or so, if we if you go to row 180, the school board area, that would be an illustration of what I understood was expressed a few minutes ago, which is to say, we're not going to fiddle around, we're just going to down the level half and half. Yes. Yeah. But when it comes down to 190, row 197, the central office assessment, that that will be the actual actual numbers that were calculated right for the existing district going forward next year it'll be different right next year there'll be just one number for or just a stockbridge unified percent. district but this year there are two historical right. numbers that we can bring in right. same for the special education right assessment. right we may we 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 may still the board may may think about it depending on how this budget process goes depending on, 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 no. on the, the, the temperature of the communities. No, David, I do have a question. Excuse me, we may need to break, we may need to break things out into, into a narrative, you know, to discuss what's happening at each campus. But yes, this is the, the, this year, we, are, we, we, we can't not do that. We, we are required by law. Yeah, what's the equipment, David? Line 175? 
Stockbridge is at over 12,000. Which line are we on? 175. Yes. Oh, that's 175. Is that it? I don't know what that means. Yeah. I, I, believe, I believe we need a new firewall or a new server. There's, there's some piece of, of equipment that, 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 that our, 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 it, it's our turn in the, in the uh, replacement cycle. Okay. David, do you do get it? I, I just have the number 12. 12, 12 right. Uh, and I think so if we let's, can we follow up with with Mark and make sure that that's that, that, that there's you know that's not just being taken off. Is that some um, kind of replacement? No, oh, I know what it is. iPads would be. Is it the five iPads? No, it is a um, a right now. If you go into the Stockbridge computer room, it's pretty disarray. There's quite a disarray of wires all over the place. So we were going to use E-rate which you get back later to be able to buy something to organize that room. And uh, he had put bids out and had three different bids on what, what it was. It was like a rack and, and uh, sure it kind of squares us away. So that's what I know. Uh, that's why it's so high because they really need yeah, I knew there was. I knew there was something. I didn't remember what it was. Just to yeah, it's it's a mess just in make there right that, now and it needs to be cleaned right. up. Right, and you just make a note that, that he's got everything he, you know, that that's not just for that, that it's, it's all the, 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 the technology needs on both campuses. And then, you know, we're just, just asking him to, to verify the numbers that, that he's given us and that they're still where they need to be. Okay, back to you, David. So if we carry on down to say, for example, another area of, of interest might be the custodian facilities and grounds, 225, road 225. So there we're showing 2.0 FTE in Rochester and 363 in Stockbridge. Is that an area of comfort? That, yeah, that's, that is, uh, as uh, uh, Bonnie explained uh, a meeting or two ago, that was uh, that was based on uh, you know walking around the, the, the grounds here and uh, uh, I, I, I don't remember what she said about how much Bruce did with uh, the, the guy in Stockbridge but um, looking at you know the, the, that FTE we understand to be to be disparate because there's just physically more you know there there, there may be you know, uh, two thirds of the kids in Rochester and one third of the kids in Stockbridge, but there's, you know, there, there's a lot more yeah. land yeah. And, and, and facilities. And Body says that that's the, that, you know, she went through and, and, and did a detailed, you know, what would you do, how would you do it uh, analysis. So, on road 228, the crossing guard shows up here. Previously, it was showing up higher in, in the instructional right. area, but now it's right. down where it belongs in the security, which is a Billings area. Mm -hmm. Going backwards, can you explain the, the magnitude of difference for the pool office of the principal? Sorry. <laughs> yep. No, that's fine. Um, I think the biggest difference there is the um, administrative assistance. We have a yes. we have a one uh, one point oh administrative assistant that's year round. Um, and is is Casey year round at Stockbridge she or she's school she year? Should. Okay. And then we have a point five um, administrative assistant because our 1.0 assistant really functions as a, um, I, I want to say, an assistant business manager. She handles a, um, again, I don't know what, what um, Casey's tasks are, but Lisa spends a, a great deal of her day with um, bills, invoices. Won't there be some of this combined next well, year? That's, Is there any efficiencies we can? Bring to yeah, this. well, that's that, that's another thing I, I had asked, and I don't think we know the answer to it yet. So we have to we have to, to deal with that for a year. And but that's just strange. how much of the like Pittsfield, for example, did not. I mean, they paid for the business manager, they paid for the business office, but they wanted to keep everything in their own treasurer. So they, you know, they ate the cost to, 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 to do all that. I would just want us to understand. And again, I don't think it's 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 worthwhile trying to solve that, but before we put this but this year's budget to bed. But looking at what that what Lisa does and how much function functionality she's duplicating that's happening in the business office because we pay the business office for a reason, and you know she can deal with paperwork here, but she could also put an envelope and let David's staff deal deal yep. with it there. And that's a common. So, so what this if your admin is year round and ours isn't. Well, there's a lot of use in this facility, and I haven't been here in the summer, okay, so I'm just talking about what I hear historically. There's a lot of summer use here. The Suzuki campus is here for a week. Somebody else is here for a week. 
Um, she has her own vacation that she takes because she's a year-round employee. Uh, there's two, at least a week or two at the end of the school year where she has to get everything buttoned up and dealt with. Um, I just went through, what I did is I just had people list their functions and what it is that they do um, and looked at some time commitments for those tasks. And again, I, I know I keep saying this, but, the, but it is, um, part of it is a function of just having more kiddos. Well, and the functions that Lisa does, you know, in terms of attendance and tracking registration. Casey's the nurse because the nurse isn't there for yep. the Lisa plays yeah. the nurse too. Yeah, Lisa's the nurse too, <laughs> but not both as both often admins. not as often as Casey. Do you feel that your that your administration administrative assistant should be maybe more than? I, mean, I don't know what we need her there for the summer, but then again, yeah. I don't know what you need one here for the summer. I think that that. I'm not recommending it, I'm we, just saying that, that I would recommend equal. Okay. This, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think... I Joanne in the background we saying... Do. Well, I don't know why we wouldn't have someone if there's someone here. I mean, our buildings are used in the summer as well. Yeah. We're renting them. There's PTO programs going on. The kids are there all, all the time. We have right. we, we have the summer camp at our school, right? You yeah, do... Is summer. it here? Right. Why what wouldn't we have someone... Yeah, it's we that's, actually. That's that's paid for by one one plan. Right, so but I mean, we don't, we don't have to, Suzuki's we don't have not paid for by the school. Well, we I mean, did re we did reduce this by um, a half a position this year. There's there's two point oh. Uh, there's and two we have point five, assistants. and you have two point. No, we have one. one. We have one. We have one. Yeah, and we. And but so she's we have not one. full time. She's full time uh, during the school year. During this, the, the program that's in there, the program that's in Stockbridge in the summer is the one is the one planet right. program. So they provide all they, they pay for it out of their budget. The person that's the, 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 the okay. person there to, 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 to open the building, close the building, deal with pretty the, much like here, right? Well, I mean, no, they don't have the the, the okay, Suzuki okay. pay as I understand it. Suzuki pays the school independently. So that so, would they wouldn't need an administrator here for that. I would think they would need well, someone who represents the school. Yeah, somebody has to be in the school whenever you. It's because it's it's, it's not a it's phones not. Phones ring, alarms go off. Suzuki's like an outside program. That. People can't get in and out of rooms. And so Stockbridge should cover that. I just don't understand. Well, I would assume we're going to share in the we we we'd be getting the revenue too yeah, the because the the, yeah. the revenue comes to the district. Yeah. I mean, if there was a need, can Bruce, can you find out if we need someone there over the summer? Well, I mean, you, I'm not saying we need someone there, but I'm saying that if there's someone here over the summer, it doesn't. Make I guess sense. you're wondering a little bit more well, about what the what. Why do we need someone well, here over the summer to sure, do okay. what? Is I that, guess that's I'm, more just, of the I'm question. just trying to say, as I look at the other schools and the way they're staffed yeah, in the summertime, I don't really do. believe that Stockbridge needs that. Okay. Now, we can talk about whether Rochester needs what it has, but. We should. I mean, we should. I don't think I mean, that. I don't think that Stockbridge needs that. Do you think Rochester needs it? Um, Lisa does uh, things that uh, a lot of other people don't do, and that's what I say about that. Because yeah. she's been given delegated those things, and that's part should of that her job. Somebody different? I don't know. I'd have to Why parse that we? out to find out. So this, this is this, this, this is the concept. This is the conversation. We're back to the idea of what what function, what business office functions are being duplicated locally here, and, 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 and should we be paying for that? And can we make an accurate assessment of that in and, this budget cycle? And the other thing I will say, and I, I know I have to risk I'm repeating myself, and it's the same situation with you know uh, some other positions that I mentioned. Um, these folks who are, they're called administrative assistants, but they're really the, sort of the faces of the school. It's the first person you see when you walk in, the first person you call when you want to rent the building or anything like that. Again, for some of these folks, if the position isn't full time, it will be a revolving door on those positions. There will be people coming and coming and going um, because most people need full time employment. Right. And so that's always the, the balance on the other side of, you know, what are we saving if we go from you know, 1.5 to 0.85. You know, we may not be saving anything. We may be just needing to hire someone every couple of years for that position. Um, Lisa also, uh, I don't know how it happened, it goes on in other schools, but she also uh, tracks all the inventory, receives all the stuff that comes in in the summer, all the teacher supplies, does all that piece, sends all that paperwork. Stuff we're done here has the yeah, office. I was going to say, stuff. Office. Office. We have supplies. We need to track it. Yeah. We need to pay yeah. it in. 
somebody must come in then to receive. Well, the uh, when the principal was full time, I mean, they're you know they, so maybe they, were, the they, they were they're, so they're in the building you know in the summer. Yeah, so there's um, the principal that's taking. Having worked and been associated with a school that didn't have a full-time principal and didn't have a full-time administrative assistant, there was a fairly significant amount of loss over the summer. Stuff was delivered only to find out when they came in at the end of August to open it up. This is gone, that's gone, this isn't here. Um, we don't know if it was ever delivered, we don't know if it got misplaced, we don't know what. But there's a fair amount of materials that come into schools in, in the summer that really need to be uh, monitored. And again, stop too. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it more time. Well, I mean, it may also be that part of Lisa's job is now going to become right. receiving everything for Stockbridge. Right. And so that we can just show up in August and just pick up all our stuff that's been, you know, accumulated. So, I mean, there's, you know, the, I, I, I don't think, I, <laughs> I don't think we need to, 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 to get equal number of EPS deliveries. But, I mean, we can <laughs> offload some of our, you know, we can, we can maybe offload some of our work on. So See, we, I can, think, we, can, we, can, we can receive things. The part that concerns me the most is, like I said, I never understood why Pittsfield paid an assessment for a central office and then paid someone to do the work right. that they were paying the assessment for the central office for. So that's the piece that I, that I think is the so most. Let me, let me address that because it seems like there's a gash in understanding here that I think I can fill in very quickly. I, don't, I doubt that there was any duplication of efforts. There's no. Different tasks in the process were happening at different Correct. places. So the assessment that was being charged to supervise again in for, for that time for Pittsfield, what, they were not paying for the same work to be done there, which was already being paid for over here. Just like now, the work that, is it Lisa who does it? Yes. Does the, the work that she's doing now, I would assume, because this happens in most of the schools in our district or most of the districts in Vermont, is that at the school level, there's an, there's an interest in maintaining some kind of control over the ordering of supplies and things. So what that means is that a, a small piece of the business function happens at the local school level. So a teacher will come in and say, I want to order these books or these markers or whatever it is. Or the principal will say, I need this kind of a register or whatever sure, it is. Sure, no, I... And, and then it needs to be get entered in as a, in a purchase order. And typically in a school district in a supervisor union, that entry level happens at the school sure. level because that's where the information is. Correct. And that's where people want to have the most control over it. So as we implement our new accounting software, that in the design so far, I haven't heard this opinion from anybody else, the design is for that sort of process to continue. So that at the local level, there will be somebody in every in every school, in every district. Correct. And that's, I think, Casey does that in our Interacting between the, the teaching staff or the staff in the school and the ordering process. They don't do any other kind of business function besides that that I'm aware of. No, Pittsfield cuts checks. I mean, they did. Oh, we, they, don't, we don't. We don't. Right, but I, that's what I mean. I don't so know what no business okay, functionality right, right. is. Right. No, we, I was just saying we don't. We don't do any so, any checks. So right now, in this supervisor unit and in the design that's being implemented with the new software, um, and which is going to become more efficient because a lot of the process can be done digitally. Sure. So that, for example. The, they will not enter in purchase orders here, they'll enter in requisitions here, and the requisitions will administratively be turned into purchase orders, and the, the approval process will all be done digitally. And sure, hopefully that includes uh, board members uh, being able to sign warrants digitally, that'd be awesome. Thank that, you. That, <laughs> I'm hoping that you'll speak to your colleagues who will support that notion, because I would love to have that, because the, not, the amount of time we spend waiting for board members to come in, because they got busy lives, we understand that, and then pour through the documents there. We are, we are hoping that not only the board, but the district treasurers, I said that for the camera, yeah. the district <laughs> treasurers will also be willing to join the digital age so that we won't be driving sure. 20 miles around to get some checks signed over here so that all the information that a board member would need and that a district treasurer would need, they will still get. Right. But it will be digital. Correct. And when they're satisfied and they've reviewed and they're satisfied that they can fulfill their function as a board member, they hit member, the button that says OK, press the button, hit F4 or whatever. And their signature will be, will be digitally recorded in the accounting software as the principal for approving requisitions would be. 
So when the principal presses the button, their signature will automatically go into a purchase order. Right, and then it'll, it'll go to the next step, and, and then it'll, it'll be available step. for the for the <laughs> employee. That's I get that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I work at the real estate. Um, so, I think so. There's no duplication of effort. Right, so, but so that's, there may be there may be an additional step that Lisa may be able to do. Some and Adam assistants can do it. Some can't. Sometimes the principal says, "How much have we got left in the supply line?" She can do that. And that will go to the administrative assistant, and they know how, they've been trained how, and we will do this for the new software too, to go in and, and print out a report. Sure, and if, I, I would hope that, that everyone, every administrative assistant could do that. I'm just, I just so want to make sure that we're, up, that, that the functions, that we're not, it's like going to the restaurant and saying, okay, well, you know, d don't worry, waiter, I'll go back and grab my food, and I'll bring that food back. <laughs> and you're, 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 you know, it's, 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 a, it's a duplication. I just want to, I do not know what Lisa does, she doesn't work. She's very busy. Here. I don't know. Right. Her it's full just the function, question but is, I know she is very busy. I, I was very what's what's been what 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 roles have been given to her, right. and and which of you know are any of them business office roles that should be done in, in, in by your team? And let let me say that that there's a great advantage to districts and to schools and districts for having business services centralized. It may not be obvious to people. But if you were to look at my in my inbox and my email, you will understand that being a business manager is not simply making sure that checks are properly signed or properly issued for bills that come in properly. There's all sorts of body of knowledge. I don't know how they in Pittsfield, the person who's, do, who's about the business function can keep track of all the things that are changing at the state level. I suspect that they don't. But that's not right. Well, they don't. I mean, in their in their defense, they were a non-operating district. So they were they were that they were dealing with difference. They 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 were dealing. So for the record, let us note that it's a non-operating <laughs> district, which means that no students, that none of those reports that <laughs> operating districts have to do. Right, but they do. They 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 did uh, they did handle. You know, they they were not. They they were writing their own tuition checks, for example, and they were doing doing all of that. And then it, it actually was difficult. It actually what the previous business manager or two business managers ago, three business managers ago. Uh, said about that was that it was actually more work for for her office to uh, to deal with the fact that these tuitions had been reconciled and, and, and dealt with separately and, and, and doing all the reporting that needed to be done on that. So it was actually it was a lose lose for and that's the for just the SU. At the small picture. The big picture is that the state requires these many reports, and that every time you've got a, a manual or an alternative system over here, that like fiscal system. That has to be manually entered into the accounting software in order to, to generate the right. SU. Oh, absolutely. I understand. So it's not just. Can we talk about Rochester and Stockbridge? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we are talking about Rochester and Stockbridge. I think this is a really important point, and I hope you're listening carefully because the, the question was raised are we, in fact, paying in Rochester twice for the same service? And I think you need to understand what the breadth and the depth of the services are that you're getting for a pittance. The assessment is a very small portion of what it would cost you if you had to pay for somebody to be doing it here. Correct, which is why, which is which why, why she's centralized. Yeah. Which is why, if she's doing functionality that, that should be done right. for a pittance in your office, um, no, 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 that would no. be the way to that, that would be the way to I'm do it. I'm talking about. So it sounds like some of this functionality is more of a district, Rochester, Stockbridge, not necessarily just Rochester that Lisa would be doing. Is that correct? Right? Well, some of it, like I said, if she's here in the summer, it right. seems silly for for. You know, I also tell UPS they can only come on Tuesdays when the principal is there. You know, UPS can just come here, you know. So I mean, vice versa, we could pay someone full time and have Rochester stuff delivered in Stockbridge. So I think the important point was <laughs> just could happen, right why there, why not? that is the difference between the school and the district. From a, from a financial and a budget point of view, that's a very important distinction to understand, especially in, in the new situation. Because it was it was always true of Stockbridge, but it now will become true of Rochester that the secondary students who are residents in Rochester used to be part of the Rochester school. They are no, no longer part of the Rochester school. They are part of the district. And so there's district activities that will need to be done for them, such as paying tuition and things like that. Verifying residents. Verifying residents, all sorts of things. A lot more than you can imagine. But So the difference between the school and the district is going to become sharper as we move into this unified district. It's, it's been sharper for Stockbridge than it's been for Rochester, especially in Vermont, where so many districts have just one school in them. I've worked in a number of them. 
But if you work in Burlington, as I have as business manager, and you have five elementary schools, the whole question of equity between schools takes on a different flavor. So it seems like there should be some efficiencies with There are some the efficiencies, asset. but there are some feelings about equity, because that, that's what was being discussed for about half an hour earlier tonight, that it's important for people in this board to understand this, this is not, you're not reinventing the wheel. It's really been happening out there, and people out there have found strategies to, to measure equity and to feel equity, because the emotions around this room tonight have been very sharp at times. And it's understandable, we're in transition, things are changing. But we're going to get to, we, want, we are aiming for a point where we can talk about things without getting all, all choked up, put it bluntly. And I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I'm not. <laughs> it, it, well, you may think that I'm pointing a finger at you, but I'm not. It's not easy. It's because not easy Because there were work. feelings all around the room. It's not yes. easy work. It's all around the room. You're not the only one who had feelings here tonight. You express them in your way, and, and we honor and respect that. I, know, I don't think anybody around here looks down on you for expressing your feelings that way. I certainly don't. I speak for myself. No, quite the opposite. Quite I mean, opposite. I really think that once people go through stuff like this and you come out the other side, you're stronger. So I think what you need to hear is that the systems that you're struggling to figure out how to work here are systems that have been struggled with in other places, and they found other, a variety of solutions, not just one solution. And that you will find the solution that works here, just as First Branch will find the solution that works there, and White River Unified District. We've got four unified districts, and each of you are going to find different ways to deal with equity and budgeting and all the other gazillion things that come. And the other thing that starts happening, and again, I'm going to speak from experience of Over the Mountain, is that these are all our kids. Your kids are 15 miles down the road from us, and our kids are 15 miles down the road from you. Is it seven or nine or it's it's seven. Twelve. Twelve. But they're all, our, they're all our kids. I don't believe any Stockbridge board member sitting here doesn't care about Rochester's kids. And I don't believe any Rochester board member sitting here doesn't care about Stockbridge's kids. So if the last question we ask ourselves on every decision is, how is this good for our kids? I think we'll keep chugging along and moving forward. Let me jump to the very last row, 260, 268 and 269. I'm for going to the last row. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny wants to go to 269. It's Passover, you guys. I got to go go brisket. <laughs> go so the, right. the intent here is to develop an indicator that is useful for reviewing equity. There are five, I think five major counts of students. Um, some of them are one day counts, some are multiple day counts, some are averaging, some are averaging over a couple of years, some are talking about the students that are physically in the building and those, some, some counts are for those that you're responsible for. So for example, in the ADM, the average daily membership, is not the number of heads that are in the building. So we, we find a, a significant anomaly between the ADM and Rochester for the most recent one compared to the enrollment. The enrollment is the number of uh, heads that you have, the number of students that you're actually educating in your building, that you need a music teacher for, and an art teacher for, and, a, and, and supplies for, and, and so on. So the attempt here was to, to use the count, which the state calls the enrollment. It's a technical term. It's not what anybody thinks it means. When the state talks about enrollment, they're talking about one, in this kind of a context, they're talking about one number. It's the October 1 count. It's a specific, it's a membership. It's not an attendance. So if you counted the heads, you would, you would get it wrong. It doesn't matter if a kid's in attendance or not. There's a concept of membership in a school. Somebody who's enrolled and registered in a school, and those terms are used interchangeably in some places and quite differently in other places in Vermont. But the bottom line is, who is the response, who's the school responsible for educating? Those who are homeschooled, they're not the responsibility of the school. They're the responsibility of the district, but not the school. And the district is responsible for accounting for the education of those kids who are homeschooled. In order to do homeschooling in the state of Vermont, you need to get permission from the agency of education, and that gets reviewed by the superintendent and perhaps the principal, whoever else gets them. So there's, there are people who are not enrolled in this school who this district is responsible for in the grades that are being operated as well as the grades that are not being operated. 
So but what this number does, this October 1 count, talks about the, the students who actually are members of this school, not the home school, not the tuition kids for going to another place. It includes the tuition kids who are coming here because those, these are the students who are sitting in front of the music teacher. The music teacher needs to have the resources and the time to address the music education needs of those kids who are here. And they include the resident kids and the tuition there kids and the state place kids and there's a variety of different kinds of kids who might be in the, in the room. And they're all included in the enrollment. So that's what the, this attempt is. So it's not a question of money. Tomorrow, can you just check how many kids are in school? That's not, that's not the question. That's not an appropriate question. Because first of all, it's a one day count. And secondly, mm -hmm. the attendance and the membership are two different concepts mm -hmm. in the state of Oregon. So, David, what is the uh, 251, 251. Uh, the difference between the number that Rochester has, 85, 90, and 0? Right. So, what is that? So, this area is called student transportation. Oh. Anytime students are being transpo transported at cost for any purpose, there should, be a, there should be an expense here. So, if they're going on a field trip, there should be a student transportation for field trips. If they're going on an athletic trip, there should be a student, a student uh, transportation for flights. If they're going to and from home, from home to school and back, or going between schools or two different <coughs> locations, or going to receive uh, psychological services at another, another campus or something, something. Um, or the, the group going to be part of the, the chorus or the band in another, another place. That'll show up here. It won't show up under instruction. It'll show up here under student transportation. That's what the state requires. And so why is Dr. Zero? Well, here's, I can answer part of that question. Um, there's interest in, and this would be something we should check <coughs> with, our, with our Stockbridge colleagues on, but there's interest on aligning the, um, uh, what do you call Boston? No, Boston Science Museum. Uh, there's an interest in um, having youngsters from a particular grade level from both schools go to that trip. It wouldn't fill up a bus. We'd be using one bus. So basically, um, the cost for our Boston, for the Rochester Boston trip is already in there. So I just decided there's no need Part to double it. No, that, no, there's a lot of other stuff in there, but the, but the Boston trip is in there. But what I'm asking is, why is Stockbridge not See, going Well, we didn't divide it, I, I guess would be the only answer that I could well, think of. Well, that's one answer. The other answer is that the principal of Stockbridge we, we, we well, don't know who that is. Well, my didn't question. request any student transportation. Well, yes, they did. That's my oh, question. Okay. What has been I done on the Stockbridge no, side for sort of a quality sure. review of making sure that these are equal? I've asked that question twice, and nobody answered it. I sat Via down email. with each one of the teachers. Well, that's one of the items is a field trip. Well, I know for, for a fact that the six, fifth and sixth grade teacher asked for four thousand dollars in the field trips. And and that was one of the so things. Let me just interrupt. For field trips, that not money is in here, but not for transportation for field trips. So for some people, they think that field trips includes everything goes with it. Right. But I'm right. saying, and I'll say it again, anytime there's an expense for student transportation, it needs to be separated from the function that it's supported. Right. But right. that's not in there. The acting Stockbridge principal needs to review this and make sure that they're equal. There are field so, trips on line 15, see, excluding I think, busing, but it's certainly and, not. And my guess is that some of that 2007 is actually busing. That, well, David, I'm just asking why excluding why on line 251 is there just no, nothing for the stuff? Because stock. nobody indicated student transportation for field trips. That's the only answer. It may, it may be assumed that it was in the field trip total, <laughs> but it wasn't communicated to me. We, w we can communicate that. We'll get that. We'll get it squared away. So it's just. So this is a, a learning that have been experience. Done by now? It could have been done Bruce, by now. Can you speak about that? I sat down with each one of the teachers and I asked them what they wanted in field trips. And there is a number on that sheet that David's looking that, that has it basically. Did we? Did we? Ask I don't know why. What I'm, oh. I'm, what I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm going to yeah. raise my voice so everybody whoa, can whoa, listen whoa, to me, whoa. please. I'll say, this is now the fourth time I think I'm saying it. Student transportation for some people in the education world is not separated from the cost of a field trip. The state of Vermont requires it to be separated from it, so that's why it's not in. So the dollar number is in up in the in the categories. Everything that was on the sheet is in there. 
It's just okay. not in student transportation. It so we need to. to so what, what needs to happen then is we need to separate that out, and we need exactly. to figure out the if the, the if when the teachers were making an estimation and giving Bruce those numbers for field trips, if they were lumping the transportation in 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 there, in which case this line that line item for field trips wherever it was back under instruction would go down because that number but that number at incorrectly 15, look at row 15, 15 and row 35 dollars in Stockford which is $1700 more than in Rochester sure and there's uh, in, 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 in row 35 it's 3060 and it's it's 5500 so there's what $2440 over in 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 Stockbridge's so field trips. Can, so so this this is what we need to this but what I want to make sure we understand is that it's not that this that the Stockbridge field trip line is, the transportation is zero it's just misentered into the spreadsheet versus it like it's number that's not been put in there because we I mean I think where a lot of the concern comes from besides the equity piece is that you know uh, a budget draft 3 totaled um, you know, and then certainly it's been refined. We've gotten much better data on tuition, but budget draft three totaled three million nine three million nine hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred forty one dollars, basically three million nine hundred and seventy dollars. But this budget draft five goes to four million two hundred and eighty three. Wow. So it's a big it's a big jump, and certainly that a lot of that is getting the tuition right. And so I'm not too scared that number went up, um, but. I, I'm scared if it goes up too much more. When I do some just back of the napkin calculating, the average tuition for that $4 million, assuming that the, the, the revenue doesn't change, I just substituted that $4 million figure for the budget expenditure line on the, on the Act 68 sheet, it moves the, the uh, per pupil cost from 15.6 to 17.3. So it's, and now we're getting pretty close to the cap. And I, like I said, I'm not, let's not, get too worked up about those numbers. I just banged them out on an iPhone really fast and I could have made a mistake. And certainly this is using older revenue figures and not right. and not you over and not, from last time. But you know I, I my concern is is that if that seventeen three is close, we're now, you know, five hundred dollars under the cap. And I think so we're getting up there. misrepresents the situation. Because for example tonight I discovered that there is revenue for rental income in Stockbridge that I was not aware of. Because if you look at the revenue thing, you will see that there is zero for revenue. In right, right. That's why I said. That's why I tried to caveat it. I'll revenue. do it again. It's a it's a back of the napkin napkin calculation. But what I what what I was concerned with the field trip again is that it's it's a big it's a bigger difference if those if the if line 15 and line 35 are going to go down the two field trip lines from K6 and from uh, a pre K if those lines are going to go down to fill. The obviously missing. I mean, we know that the kids aren't walking to field trips in Stockbridge. Um, so if, if those lines are going down and, and that line is going up, that's okay. I mean, that's a wash. That's and, 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 and hopefully that's the way it is. I just want to make. I just want us to make sure that that's where that, that that's where that goes because I don't want us to have a connection. Did we talk about adding an inter-campus transportation last time? Right, and that was that was going to be my next question. Because remember we had talked about, as you said, the transportation assessment line, line that is now 252, can only be home to school, school to home. And correct? I, I was not trying to say that it can only be, it's say, or say it is only. So the assessment is only based on the costs of getting right. to and from. Right, so we, one of the things that so we had asked. education, field trips, and athletics are all right. built directly to the town. Right, correct. Ah. And the, so, so the piece that we were getting at, and I thought when you explained this to me last time, was that if we, it's not a field trip, it's not an athletic trip, it's a schlepping the kids up here to, to do whatever it is they're doing up here, schlepping the kids down there to do whatever it is they're doing down there, but those trips, like to see for you schlep, class or I schlep twice. <laughs> um, for, the, for, for, for those trips, they would have to be in a, a, a non-assessment line. So, yes. could, so I think we need you guys to, for the next budget rev, uh, uh, revision, we need some thought to be given to how much, how much money do we, are, we, are we putting in this budget to move the kids between the campuses? Because I can't see that being, I mean, if there's gonna be some kind of regular activities, even if they're not weekly, if they're monthly or whatever, I, I can't see that being, you know, an insignificant figure. Just getting an idea of how much we're going to do that. Schlepping is not insignificant. You'd make a new one, I think. Or well, I think there's two questions. This is some, seems like a simple question, but there's actually two questions in there. 
what line would it be on? It could be put on a, on a separate line so that board members could see this is for a different kinds of expense. From a point of view of accounting, it would be the same line, it would be the same code. So, if as field be, trips, not as assessment. As, as field trips, yeah. Correct. Because the function, so so in the account accounting world, the, the, the part of the code is the function. What is the function of a trip? The if the function is instruction, it doesn't matter whether the instruction is going for field trip or instruction for band or instruction for math class, combined math class. It's all instruction. So the, there would be a difference in terms of the, there's an element of the account code for the program. So if it was athletics, it would have a different. So there are nine different elements to the account code structure. And one of them is to do with the program. So that if it was a field trip for instruction, <coughs> would it be, you have to figure out what kind of a program it is. Yeah. Is it for remedial work or is it for athletics? Is it for clubs? So there's different codes for different things. So from the state point of view, they need to know what is the purpose of this transportation. So it could be on a different line, but with the same code. Could have a separate project, a separate number attached to, to distinguish between the two. So whatever the board needs to see, we will do the accounting to make sure it happens. In terms of what we spoke of yesterday, the education committee uh, meeting, they did. The teachers have been talking about maybe a monthly or bi-monthly. So if we could maybe estimate a bi-monthly, monthly. I'm not sure if we can use it in the average. So there was a one, but one at Stockbridge, one in Rochester. To go, it's, yeah, 90, exactly. yeah, it's 90 cents a mile and 11 dollars and 50 cents an hour for the driver okay. and there you have it i just follow how many times you want to do it so 50 dollars per <coughs> trip maybe or probably not much more, more than, than that, that. And, then, and the teachers okay. were asking for twice a month well, so that's a thousand dollars if you put 100 in for 10 months it's i was going to say two thousand but we don't need two thousand we don't need two thousand as your business manager, I do not do back of the cigarette packet calculations. Yeah. <laughs> I will put it in a spreadsheet and calculate it. There you I will go. bring you the answer. <laughs> and, that, and that may get used. And I mean, I'm the, they did spoke of it yesterday. And okay. Was there anything that you guys spoke about um, that would impact the budget? Like, if, I don't know if we that have we a separate about. line item <laughs> for like special programming for like, STEM initiatives or. We they talked about STEM initiatives, <coughs> they talked about drama, they talked about... It would be a shame about, if we're all excited, but then we don't have the money. Yeah, exactly. Things. And that's why I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, get excited at the education committee meeting and then not have the money right. to do it. So I think there was something we talked, we spoke of yesterday about maybe moving winter wellness into the budgets for both campuses. I'm not sure if that reflects that. Thank so you. That was one of my questions is where, what where lines winter wellness? Yeah. Rochester's winter wellness mileage, traveling bus drivers, we'll is in, in the busing line. Or field trip. That's in yeah. our field trip. Okay. Six. So that would have to be, we talked about yesterday, we were talking about actually putting all the field, field trips, trips in the budget because we're getting an increasing number of kids who can't afford it. And this way, it won't have to be a stigma. Yeah. The field trips are just paid for it, so those kids don't have to feel that they can't go. Everybody, it, so putting it in the budget now rather than asking PTO, because parents We're can't do parents it. parents to fundraise, yeah. That's a good idea. So from an accounting point of view, it doesn't have to be either or. I know in, 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 it's common thinking in the one school districts for the PTO, PTO to want to do something and do some fundraising and, and, and to pay for something. But there's nothing which says that PTO cannot contribute that money into the school district. So the, I think one of the most dangerous things from a budget point of view is to have an, a, a, an off, offline budget, which is what a lot of PTO yeah. spending yeah. is, sure. offline for budget. Amazing. And so for five years, they pay for the sixth grade trip going off to, yeah, to, work, to, to Boston, yeah, and, then yeah. and then they don't pay, and suddenly, well, don't we have it in the budget? Right. Well, we never, we always had an offline budget, just like exactly. you Congress and the military budget. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't so, compare us to Congress. <laughs> <laughs> there was also even at our worst, Please we're not that bad, really. yeah. There was also talk of QA. I don't know. Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Q Q yeah. trying to get to see if Rochester was interested, and I know that's easily a combined. That's yes. easily. I mean, it's yes. Salisbury. Yeah. So three hundred. Oh, but so it's hungry easily. Exactly. Exactly. And what, exactly. and what the teacher uh, Ali uh, wanted to do, uh, I put another five hundred dollars in. He wanted to take his kids to a zoo somewhere. There's no reason why 
Rochester couldn't join up with that. The second grade. Rochester goes to Park Safari. Yeah. To, to and Park Stockbridge Park. could join. Yeah. 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 Or if there's another um, place that Stockbridge is going to, we could really go with their trip. I mean, that doesn't. Yeah. And I don't know where the zoo <laughs> is. That. No, I think that's really important. I mean, it, when I saw the picture in the in the newspaper of the pre K's yes. coming yeah. together, yeah. They you had just a good time. and and it was a. Nice size number, you know. I mean, there was a mixture there that they could socialize with. It was really great, and I and I think the more we can do that, the better off we are. My daughter came home, is ecstatic. She's yeah, yeah, you know, she's five, and she came home. She's like, I met a new girl, and like she held my hand all the time. Yeah, and it was fun. It was, I'm just it was very great. happy that she doesn't have a lot of girls in her class. So I was very happy to have that yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So I'm sorry. The winter wellness um, is the rest of it in regular field trips. What, you've got the transportation part now. Now the cost part. What, what type? Where is that in there? The cost. That, that program, program is, is very. That the skiing? Yes, that is. it is. Um, I'm a big proponent of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that I think that we should really support in our communities, considering we're in a outdoor recreational area. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I That's always been a big thing in Stockbridge. It's not just ditched in 35. Yeah. 35. Oh, in 35. Um, okay, great. Right. There was, I, that is something you're going to, there was some conversation that happened. It's just a guess about how many kids will have to have whatever we think they're going to charge us next year. We're, we're, we're it was, it was due to the fact that you guys needed parents to volunteer and there wasn't parent volunteers. I don't know. Oh, because it has your right. transportation in it. But it says exclusive. So it wasn't like a. Correct. Right. I remember it was. Yeah. I remember yeah. it was. Well, it was well, well, except that it wasn't. So right. just didn't know that. that okay, that's that's where that's yeah. that's we were. Yes, we, we, did, we discussed, we discussed, you discussed, you discussed the possibility. Well, we discussed that on the transportation. So now I'm going to use Jenny's point of we are losing our whole school. quality control here because now you're making a case. We're going from a K 12 to a K 6. I think we do have some hardships going on. What are you learning? Six disparities in the problem. Completely. We got a problem. Exactly. We don't have a problem. Ourselves. There could be an explanation for it. Well, you know, the 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 the, the grounds piece is, is you know was was easy to explain. There is your technology piece. Yeah, is easy to explain. That's, that's a, you know, I think we need to. I, I, I think we need to be just you know creative and thinking about what's what are the things and being able to to, to to define what the pain points are going to be and be able to defend them. And if you took the, the admin assistant out of the principal, the Rochester is still 30% higher than the stock bridge. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my face. Um, so 222, that line, if you take out Bonnie's mentioning that the, um, the admin is higher in Rochester, if you take that, if you take out line 203, Rochester is still 30% higher. Well, unfortunately, the, with more people, more, um, People working, you have increased health insurance because that's a big difference there. So I don't know if you took out that health insurance line and the FICA line, if that would help. And the dental insurance line, I'd say about the same. Yeah, like telephone. I mean, I know they're small numbers, but I still think that there needs to be a review to compare the two. And actually, I mean, really, the, there's a, it's a, it, 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 both of the telephone expense numbers just, just seem very. I mean, they did five thousand dollars. Is that? What line are you calling? I'm sorry, I'm looking at line uh, two fifteen. Now that that's a number, to be frank, that I left in there, but we are trying to get a handle on it. At when the school closed suddenly, the middle school, the high school program, yeah. there are a number of phones and classrooms and offices, and we need to get a handle on how many of those lines can we shut down and not have. Yep. and what's the impact on the bill. So a gentleman was in here, it was the day before yesterday. Um, he's going to start helping us look at that. But we definitely have more forms and lines than we need right now. So hopefully we can get some sense of, I'm not sure by the time we want to finalize this budget, we'll have a, a good sense of that. But we have to get a handle on that. So this being the first budget is going to be a, a learning experience. And the next year our budget will be better. And right. that will be it better. never works that way. But will you be gone by then? <laughs> it all depends. John, did you guys keep it? Did you already say? No, down or up? Telephone expense. Um, yeah, because your the year. FY16 actuals were 9,200 for phone in Rochester. Yeah, FY17 is 
12 grand in phone? Yeah, oh, phone and no leases. Idea. You have to, there's also our copy lease there, right? No, it's phone and internet. So I'm, I'm curious for, about the, for, the, the... No, it says... Oh, so I'm looking at all the leases. leases. Jeez, I'm sorry. Phone. Uh, I, I know that I was working with our previous um, principal at looking at that phone system um, because the phone bill was quite crazy. It's astronomical. And you're, so you're telling me that that never got fixed? That is still astronomical? So I'm telling you, I think our phone bills are still pretty high. Okay, because it was something that we worked with and, and I was um, led to believe that it had been fixed and somebody had come in and they had removed a lot of the, the disconnect to the phone lines and it had changed. I believe some I believe some of that happened, okay. Amy, but I do know there's still a number of phones still a lot more. in the places done. when I walk through that are vacant that still have phones in them. Well, that's a right, thing we have to realize is what we're phones, learning it's is it's the, the number of the lines. It's the number of lines. What just we're learning is there's yeah. just so many things that. that when you shut down high school that you just don't even realize that they're savings with. The, 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 for the subscriptions to for the high schoolers to be online for certain things. We don't need that anymore, but right. you don't necessarily realize that immediately. Right. Well, the other, the, the other question is, and we should ask Mark about this, what bandwidth is coming into this building and is it needed? You know, because that's the person you need to you you, you need to not. I think we have UC no fiber now, up. right? I think so. I think we have UC fiber now. Do you? Okay, because that I mean that the, that would be good to confirm. That would be good to confirm. That'd be good There's for that'd be good for bill. David. David. Oh, <laughs> to I don't see the bills. No, the, no, that's a, that's that's a big big deal because yeah, it at, the, is. At, the, at the at the at the high school we still have we don't have EC fiber we still have Sobernet or First Light or whatever they're called yeah. now and they charge us they charge us and this is a high school and middle school EC fiber charges me a hundred bucks a month yeah. for more bandwidth than I'm getting from Sobernet I've I, I've got like um, the the uh, the Federal Department of Education puts out a bandwidth figure this is how much bandwidth to buy per kid da, 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 da. And I up that a bit and I buy that and to buy. To, to, to buy the bandwidth at the high school that I need for the number of high school students I have a little bit more. Um, it cost me seven, six hundred some bucks a month. Yeah, wow. To get more bandwidth with EC Fiber cost me a hundred yep. bucks a month. So I, if, I if, if you move to EC Fiber, I will contact Mark and we, we should make sure that, that we, 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 we A, have done that and B, you know, if you I move to EC Fiber and you get a ton of, is you get, EC Fiber um, uh, available in Stockbridge yet? It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's going to be at the they, they came, they came, they came, and they, 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 it's at the school, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. they, they, came they, came, they came to the house. Well, that's what I was wondering if, if the school had. Um, so. Do we have, it's ten. It's just 10 one now. It's so, just 10 one? Well, it's just it just Well, it just turned 10 one because a minute ago it was just David, 10 o'clock. Are you finished? I, I, I do not need to say any more. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say, is anyone else, I want to are there any big, big areas that we needed to administrate? Yep. Do you want to talk about that? In do you want to talk about that tonight? Or do you want to uh, push that conversation off till uh, the next time? I well, I, I, we should go into non-public. Oh, we should. Let's, let's, let's do that. Let's do that for a few I'd minutes. I'd like to just okay. tell you, uh, talk to you. Yeah, let's let's try to, can we make it like five or ten minutes? But, yeah. Night. Bonnie, David, and, and uh, <laughs> Joanne and, and Mason can go. And we'll go into non-public. Oh, David, oh, thank you. For the night? Yes. 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 For the night. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Thank you for all your hard work, and I'm sorry if we put any questions. Yeah, we're going to non-public session, executive right. session, and uh, then we're going to adjourn. No action is going to be taken after. But I'm going to try to get my face behind yeah, David so, <laughs> so that he can hear. We're going to go into non-public session There's to discuss a personnel matter. Uh,